funded. All right. The, the place over here, that's where they, that's the only place now close, the PayPal place on 137. So if you want to do a, for the team, you want to do like a, I, I wanted to do I wanted to do like an annual well I, I would love to get like a team but not just me getting nuts right but like I, I I would like to at least get like you know how we have the annual picnic I'd like to have an annual like resellers versus brand PL seller like tournament bring some crew out there and just create content yeah like get some sponsors involved and stuff like that but cool. right but I, but I don't know the first thing I don't know who to go talk to how do we even price that like what is there a time oh, limit is talk it to the guy right here. yeah but do you because Gabe apparently used to do pro paintball. I don't know if you know that. It's a speed, speed, speed ball. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that. a, well, like pro paintball. We used to do. We used to play here. We used to play right there before they closed all that up. Before anything existed, right there in Richard. We used to play right in there. All the time. And now we're old and slow. And now I'm like, man, am I going to do something that I can do with this? But I'm going to break a knee. And, so I, they told me the kids are going to do it. And some of, the, some of the dads are going to do it from jujitsu. Some of the guys are going there. Like eight when? Guys, right now. Oh, man. It's, it's, a, it's Richie's kids. Uh, Is George going? No, no way. <laughs> no, it's Richie's uh, age group, right? Oh, not, oh, not, oh. Our kids, not the little ones. And they're like, an opportunity to shoot up teenagers? Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm in. We got a hot mic, too, by the way. Just for the people that don't know your voice, all they hear for you the first time, the oh, opportunity God. to shoot teenagers. Like, they're like, they're going to call it in. All right. All right. I'll pop one of these over here. What's on the agenda today? Um, from 1 to 2, well, I guess one ten to 2 is going to be a beginner hour, open topic. And then 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., I'm going to go into goal setting like how to set correct goals. That, I mean, that's one that I failed on for a long time. What, what's realistic, what's unrealistic, how to track them. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know if that was a junior high thing they taught, but I dropped out of elementary, so like, I don't know if that's why I missed it. I mean, it worked out great. It did, it did, it did, look. Look at this. You're doing, you're doing all right? Absolutely. Why do you spend six on I don't, I don't know what kind of stuff you were drinking last night that was like sticky as hell, but we brought in a scraper and got it. Nah, it was fine, bro. It was a lot better than I thought. A lot better than the previous time. Oh, that's right. You guys haven't you haven't come to the breakfasts. Actually, you haven't been invited or initiated or anything for the breakfasts. So. So yeah, just forget I even said anything. <laughs> Your feelings won't get hurt if you just forget that it's a thing. You know when you're over there, we can't hear you. So that's the, I like that. Yeah, for sure. By the way, we have hot mics, just again, so everybody knows. For everybody that wants perhaps say F it instead of. Yeah. <laughs> I think I dropped a couple f bombs while we were just talking. Nah, you it's, told it's me okay. Before. You well, waited for me to say we, it. We know we know it's your first day actually coming, so like you're yeah. forgiven on that. His one. palms yeah. are sweaty, knees no, weak, no, no, arms no, are that. heavy. There's vomit on his sweater At least already. Stand in front of the mic if you're gonna do it, so they know who's doing it. Mom's spaghetti. He's nervous, but on the surface he looks calm and <laughs> 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 drop bombs. But he keeps on. <laughs> but he wrote down. Okay, we're, we're, we're going to start in seven minutes. Um, we're going to start at seven box, minutes. Seven sets. minutes over. Is there anybody you can take a look and see how much they cost us to do this? Did you bring me one time? He's like, he knew when he was younger, he'd remember that stuff. He'd write it down. Picture. Yeah, if he doesn't have his tablet, have a, it's not have happening. A picture of him anywhere that you can send to us? I'm going to go, I'm going to see you next week. We have one in the garage. Just a quick little video of it. Send it to me. Please. I think we have one out there. I don't know. I think we do. Yeah, I'm just looking for the construction of the box and how shiny the outside is. So send me a little video on that. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, babe. Thank you. Hold on. We got some questions here. Let me ask, answer these while we're, before we get rolling. Right. I, thought you were, I didn't know you were coming today because you said you didn't, you didn't think you were All coming. All right. Let's see. Yeah. 
So I didn't know you were coming. Please add this question That's for later. That's I'll answer it now. What's up? How's it going, Angela? Steve in the house. What's up, Mace? Mace W would have been Mace Windu, and I would have been like, oh, yeah. But okay. What's up, Mace J? He's in China. Yeah. So it says, I had a situation that I would like a second on. I had a paid well, service. Up? I have paid a service, a lot of money to set up an Amazon store and source a product for me. Ultimately, they did not deliver. I have 500 units of a product that is overpriced compared to the rest of the market. My product has been live for two weeks. I'm not sure what to do with the situation. Mace, here's my... Hot mic. Hot mic. Here's my WhatsApp. It, it would be so much better if you sent this to me on WhatsApp. But there's my number. Um, I'm not going to be able to answer this. I'll, I'll answer this in the meetup group if you want, but for me to really give you specific answers on this, I need to know the product. Um, hopefully there's enough tr trust built in that you know I'm not going to go behind your back and try to like sell this product against you. But if you feel comfortable sharing the product in the meetup group, I have no problem openly giving feedback, um, giving feedback on that. So up to you. You can link in the comments to the actual product, and then I'll, I'll, I'll give feedback to the group. Or you can send me on WhatsApp the information, and I'm, I'm not going to try to sell you anything or sell you on any more services or anything like that. But I can, I can give you the feedback as to what to do. Um, unfortunately, you, a lot of the really cool things you could do are sort of like out the window once you've picked a bad oh, product, that, assuming it is, PBS, right? There's still Amazon. some tricks you can do, but um, I'll be able to help you on that uh, without a doubt. An so it'll either be year. after the group today, which um, I'll probably be here until 6, 7 doing, p.m. because we stay um, networking after the class. Promotions but I'll Hispanic have it on my WhatsApp. I'll see it as unread, and then either this evening or to tomorrow when the kids are drawing or something like that, I'll be able to pull it up, give you some feedback, maybe do a Loom video like very specific to you. So you're your call either way, we, but my wife more than happy to help you out with that. interviewed her a bunch of times, and then she's like, oh, we actually have this oh, you're other opportunity, I think. All after right, that interview, we're going to start in like, like four more minutes. Whoever so that person is, is responsible. Just running a little behind. Recommending or recommending, right. and she fucking, he or she, it was a group, fucking love Natalie. Like, you know what, we're going to we're gonna put you on a bunch of other stuff. So like a couple weeks later, they called, uh, they sent an email again, and they said, we got something else, are you interested? And I told Natalie, you fucking don't know anything. You say yes to everything, you know? <laughs> and then they're like, oh, there's a show on PBS, and they have the whole thing, we want you to introduce you to a producer. And then from there, it was like meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting for the producers, the directors, and all these people. And then in like April, they're like, hey, we want to invite Cold. you to the show if you guys want to do it. And we're like, it's like oh my yeah. God. <laughs> wow. So we're from there. And so then what do we mean? from there, we go to Google Relationship with Amazon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Over like a month. I, I don't know what department it is. I'm looking up to see what it is. Well, it was a, they just keep almost a month stuff. period. My family, my family, family so we like, were. Uh, people it, magazine it wanted wanted to do a nice thing about special business. COVID? COVID? No, 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 no. COVID is just, I thought it was just a regular COVID. If anybody gets sick longer than two days now, you have to ask. No, no, no. We'll make sure we did the COVID test, but it was bad. So I'm glad that I just... Joe, I want to come today. Yes, um, we have some answers, and then we have some technicians. We will join us. Get on cool. Hispanic owned yeah. businesses. Love it. We're so going to start in like good, two more minutes. Nice cool. And they've been reaching out a lot. So it's given us good exposure and legitimacy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like Telemundo's not going to put you on TV. No, no, you're not. Yeah, you're flat by night. You're shady. Exactly, exactly. And then the and then the show helped out a lot. I mean, now and again, now you search it out. It's funny that both of you were you and. What I'm it's saying, I don't know if you, yeah I was like we yeah. weren't connected yeah. at all and and then this like, guy maybe Carlos is running behind the scenes and Carlos like, yeah he's he, he was he scoped me out he's like hey let's go let's go to this jujitsu place yeah. I've been I've been following this guy around it was a secret uh, TV show booker and it was so it was so I, I actually when I went into the jujitsu place I'm sitting there and it's like I don't know I really don't know how to have a conversation about something I I do but it's how like, the hell do we start talking about that I think we were talking about like we what, do what we do, do? you yeah. and you mentioned. IT. IT, and yeah. I think as an afterthought, I think you, you might mentioned have said this other thing that you did selling online. I was like, oh, yeah, I sell online. Yeah. And oh, I sell online. Yeah, it kind of started. And then he went, well, I'm on TV. And I was like, well, I can't beat that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, well, Amazon had me on TV. And I was like, well, I'm just a seller. I'm like just a that. seller. It was not like that. Don't listen to him. And then he's like, oh, I got another buddy of mine who also <laughs> Amazon called, and he was on TV, too. I'm like, yeah, man, we did this show. He's like, right. wait, they did something similar. The same show. It was he's talking about the other Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, they, they did Alex on Monday, 
And then they came to my house on, and then we did ours on Wednesday. Figure like, out, right, we're in South Florida, let's find somebody else. Let's do all the Miami people. Yeah, yeah, it's so funny. What a coincidence. And then this guy shows up, you know, yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah, oh no, now your network will be like, of sellers will be like through the roof. Yeah, so exciting. And he's usually extraordinarily antisocial. So the fact that he opened up to you and I, Ooh, Mr. Tom, Thomas? yeah, man, a few words. Like <laughs> the fact that he, this is, <laughs> all right, we're going to, uh, is it possible? I hate to like always be asking you, but like yeah. Andres is not re responsible all the time. But like, can you look at the YouTube for any questions that come in? And Single wall, right? Uh, can, wall. can I tap Single into your like brain that knows how to like connect stuff that. mentally? Very yeah. gifty. What would you get hardware that fits this? That allows me to have, don't say a computer, that allows me to have a screen to see questions and think sometimes it won't be me, to see questions that are coming here, but that does not require some fancy setup because we don't want this to look like the set off of Avatar. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not talking to you guys. You guys made that way too easy. Okay, never mind. I don't want to know. It's got to be connected to the internet somehow. I'm not, it's a hardware question. I'll, you don't want well, you to. Can put a, you can put a screen there. Put your phone. It's not an influencer question. It's a hardware question. <laughs> you and I bow out on hardware questions. Okay. We've agreed to that. Hey, what's up? How are you? How's the Pittsburgh Steelers? Right. I think maybe like a. Let's do this. So you got questions? Topic. Hold up, Ricky. Still talks. Come on, come on, Ricky. You got <laughs> Um, oh, I'm thinking of a solution for you. By the way, you guys that don't know Ricky, he's part of the group, but usually there's more important things going on in his life, like football. Football, right? <laughs> so you guys football can connect big time, right there. Army Navy. Today. You guys nice connect, to yeah. Meet you guys. Army Navy is why we got him. That's he'll, that's a rigged game. Don't worry about but it. he'll probably sneak out around two if my mo if I put good money on that. Oh, I gotta go do paintball. <laughs> right, yeah. paintball. So, yeah. but he's a seller. Hopefully, you'll start seeing him around a lot more. Um. Today's topic is going to be on setting, uh, setting, resetting, and how to go about setting goals. That's going to be at 2 p.m. Everybody here except Ricky, though, and some people on the stream haven't. Um, you, you know that's when our topics start. Uh, quick announcements. Um, this is our last formal meetup of the year. We have a we have an end of year kind of like you're gonna see it on the meetup group an end of year like Xmas celebration meetup kind of like but it's gonna be pure networking there's gonna be no presentations um, we're structuring it as like a BYOB potluck so uh, Tom's house where is it this year it's, it's it's I'm gonna put the address but yes it's at it's at Palacio de Mays Palacio de Mays. Um, next to the pot, next to the mound of soil. Host, hosted by Roxy. Bring your bring your DJ gloves. soil. Bring your garden gloves. And your DJ gloves. soil. No. DJ soil. Give me advance notice. I'll do it. No, it'll it'll be here. Um, we're gonna have some tables and chairs. Yeah, it's gonna be here. We're gonna have some tables and chairs set up. I'm, I'm, it's bring your own, like bring bring a dish if you can. You do not have to. If that is too intimidating for you, just show up. There's gonna be I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of food. Um, I'm ordering pizza. Tom said he's doing the, the maize secret stroganoff, um, his, his classic. But um, you just bring, if you could bring some little knickknack or something like that, that's fine, but there's got to be plenty. Like, don't not come because of that. As far as people on the stream, I, I don't have a stream link set up for it because I feel like I would love to. Like, you're more than welcome to, but since everyone's not going to be sitting right here for it, I, I don't know what the experience is going to be like for people on the stream. If you're like, hey, I just want to like, can you mic everybody up and leave some mics? I think the conversations are going to be off the chain. Like, I think it's going to be absolutely amazing. Like, you're going to be able to hear all these different combos going on things that people normally are not up here talking about. So if, if enough people from the stream let me know that you'd still like, maybe, maybe we mic people up. And if somebody's wearing a colored hat, you know that person's mic'd up kind of like a game. We'll try it. We've never done that. But um, it's not a bad idea, right? Like, Okay. I think it's, you know what, we're going to do that. I'm going to set up a stream and we're going to mic some people up and we'll have these cubes around give so you'll a, be able to. Right, but if, but if you're, if, if that idea of like a voyeurism like meetup is not your thing, um, you know in advance. But this, so this will be our last structured one. Um, this will also be one of the last times I go over this, the way I've been going over the way we introduce sponsors. Um, in the beginning of the year, what we're going to have is on the TV. We're super grateful for the sponsors, but the sponsors are going to be on a, on a repeat. So we're going to see some of that. 
Uh, I feel like we've gotten super blessed with the amount of sponsors that we have that it's now taking up like five or six minutes. I don't think it's a good, I don't think the sponsors want to be bunched up into this thing that everyone's tuning out on. It doesn't do, any, it doesn't do anyone justice on that, right? It's not a respectful of your time. I, I, I'm stressed that I'm going to forget one and then I'm going to get an email, you know? And then if you're watching on the stream, we're going to have a ticker on the bottom that is just cycling through kind of like NASCAR or, or something like that. That's NASCAR, right? NASCAR still does that? No, oh, ticker symbol. Ticker symbol, is what it is? Okay. A ticker on the bottom that's going to say the sponsors, right? So that, that'll be more time for us to talk about content and while also improving the experience of the sponsors and, and that's what we always want to do. Um, also, in person, you're going to see more banners. So for our, for our like flagship platinum sponsors, we're going to have more of these banners. Um, we had our Tampa end of year event. I was there Wednesday with Andres and Gabe. I don't know if Gabe's going to be here today, but uh, it went amazing, right? Yeah, yeah I, I think it went, it went amazing. Probably the best Tampa, Wizards of Ecom Tampa chapter event that we, we've had yeah. ever. Um, que mas? Um, sponsors that we do have, some flagship sponsors, we have Avast, Katita, Enzo, Carbon6, <coughs> Sellers, Phi, um, mentioned Enzo, uh, Honu Worldwide. Uh, there, there's a service by Honu Worldwide, and I'm not just singling them out amongst all of them, but this is one that if you are importing from China, because I know you're about to, right? You have something, of, you're in the process of bringing from China, yeah? Anybody that is bringing stuff over from China, I highly, highly, highly recommend you get a hold of Afolabi. I'll make an intro if you want, but you could just go straight to Honu Worldwide and go to their service called Tariff Terminator and just contact them and say, hey, um, I have this product. I'm bringing it from China. Am I paying too much in tariffs? They're going to charge you nothing. And then they're going to see what you're paying and what code you're under. And if they can get you a better code and save you money, then it's like, I think, $299. $199 or $299? $299. Yeah, $299. So like, even if they save you 8%, that's going to pay for itself a bazillion times over. That's over the life of the product. And usually it's a lot more. Um, they even have a testimonial now. It's, I don't know if you recommend, but it's just like this much older gringo uh, <laughs> Tom. And Lisa. Oh, and Lisa, no. Very young, blonde, and older gringo guy. <laughs> Um, but no, no, but this helped Tom out a lot. It's definitely the amount of money that it cost Tom is more than paid for, like, right? Yeah, yeah a million times over. So if you're doing that, just do it. It's Tariff Terminator, which you could just Google Tariff Terminator, but it is a service of one of our sponsors called Honu Worldwide. So H O N U Worldwide. Their banner, when we stopped today, it just came in yesterday. I'm going to be hanging it. But it's, yeah, and they have a code that'll, that might even save you off that service when I hang it. So, like, check it out. But it's Honu Worldwide, H-O-N-U Worldwide, HonuWorldwide.com. Uh, final one, if you guys see me, like, covering my mouth or, like, doing these weird things with my mouth, I'm just going to go out and say it. I had a procedure done, and I have, like, a rod right here. So, like, if you see me doing any weird things, it's me trying to, like, cover that up. Just on his honor, right? Okay. I'll just put that out there so like, I stop thinking about it. Nobody knew about it until right now. Well, well that, that's okay. <laughs> you, you know what? No one knew. You might be right. But in my mind, all of you were just staring at it. So like, I want to get that out. <laughs> I'm imagining on the stream, are they saying, what is that in his mouth? <laughs> right? They're like zooming their screens. No? Okay. Um, what else? We also have a bunch of other sponsors. Um, one of them, any jams you get into on Amazon, Ecom Chris. Highly recommend. Um, it gets you out of these problems. He's definitely not the one you, when you search, cheapest way to get out of problems on Amazon, no. But he is the one that gets you out of problems. He's got a, like almost everyone we've sent his way um, out of problems. Uh, Leia from his team, and I think uh, Chris himself are actually in our Telegram groups and our main groups. So like if you could just tag Leia in there when you have an issue, and like she can help you. She will respond rather quick. Um, so take advantage of that. Like we. I, I'm very happy with them as a sponsor. If you're doing wholesale, we have Smart Scout. Um, this, this next year, I plan on doing a lot of cool stuff with Seller Mobile. Um, I really want everyone to feel comfortable with dashboards in their business. If you can't track it, you can't control it, it's cheesy, but it's so true. Um, and the technology that's out there now, there's a way to set up your dashboards to where instead of you going on this hamster wheel of stress about what's going on in your business, you should be able to pop your mobile app open and just check it out. 
they have something set up for the group that's 20 bucks a month. Yes, the more you want to build into that dashboard, the more expensive it gets, but you can start for 20 bucks. And to be honest, if you could afford the robust dashboard right now, I highly recommend you don't because you want to know how to actually use the dashboard. And it's going to be a lot easier to use at the 20 bucks level and then bolt on what you need, okay? And, and it does international. So like wherever else you sell, like you can all pull it into this one single sexy dashboard, okay? There's no, if, if you don't want to get the $20 one, I, I would go out there and say I recommend, if you don't have a dashboard and you're not willing to pay the 20 bucks for a dashboard, I think you should consider not selling online. Because it, you're just going to have a problem down the line. Like it's speaking to a greater problem that you're not concerned about your numbers, right? And I'm saying that from a loving spot. Obviously you guys know me, like I want you to stay, I want you to keep selling, but like I also want to like save some time in your life. And if you're not willing to track that, I mean, Starbucks is hiring, like there's a lot of cool stuff happening in the world, like, you know, like, like don't waste your time, like, right? Uh, the cruise, shockingly, there is a few cabins left. Um, I, I'm gonna, I said it last week, so I don't wanna just sound like false sense of urgency or scarcity. I would be shocked if this time next week there are any cabins left. What that means though, is that you can't just go book your cabin at that point. You're gonna need to call every day and get whoever canceled and, and get in. So it's not the end of the world, but you are talking about paying a premium um, on the cabin. The bad news is Ricky's not gonna be able to make it. If I do go on a cruise, it's a one-way trip. Okay, that's, that's, that's new beginning. We'll call it new beginnings. We'll call the trip new beginnings. The last trip of my life. Well, if, if you go visit his warehouse and his facility, it'd be a one-way trip too, because then you're gonna be on like, you'll have nine million launches. You're gonna go back home and tell wifey about nine new products you wanna launch. Tom is, a, Tom is amused, man. It's just he's amused. He's just inspiration. Oh, don't do that. His head gets, he's, he's a sucker for this, this feedback. Like his head's going to blow up. Look at him. Look at him. It all I'm, I'm glad he's so engaged with what we're talking about. What? You have your little fax. <laughs> we need to get you a little fax machine there. Like, is your office good? <laughs> <laughs> Are you good? When you say something good, I'll take a note. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm going to step it up. Um, also, I'd love feedback on the audio for the people on the stream. We have this new little lanyard, so we don't have to clip on and deal with all this other stuff. I'm hoping that the audio goes good. If Fernando's idea, thank you, Fernando. Uh, keep a lookout out for the new private label. Product. Yes, yes, we actually found a really cool private label opportunity with this lanyard. By the way, this lanyard was what? Seventeen. $18. Was $17 lanyard, wow. and it was by some random brand that they made this lanyard for their brand, but it's compatible with all of these types of mics. So if you just created one and, and did the whole like uh, page out of, you know, the Creative Cloners handbook, and, you know, and just said, here's a lanyard f compatible with road. Here's this lanyard compatible with blank. Like you would have a whole thing of lanyards at 17 bucks. This thing does not more than 20 cents. Like it is not, maybe landed not 20 cents. Mm -hmm. The packaging, if you did it right, would cost more than it was, it was, and it was a like cellophane bag, like it was nothing. Like they're killing it on this, right? So like we, we discovered that. Maybe it happens, like maybe we, maybe we do it, yeah. Um, so we start these classes off with a beginner hour. Um, I don't see, we got some beginners here, but um, even you guys are starting to move out of beginner phase, right? But uh, we got some beginners here. I'm sure we have some beginners on the stream, so we're gonna open it up to any questions that anybody has. One of the really different things we're gonna do next year, and you're gonna miss what we're doing now, and you'll be like, wow, why didn't I take advantage of all these questions I had that I was just, I had fan out to even ask, is that starting next year in the beginner hour is gonna be live product sourcing. So I'm gonna spend a chunk of the beginner hour just doing live product sourcing, and we're just gonna be talking it through, and I figure like, we've, when I looked back and evaluated the beginner hours of what we've done so far, there's too much dead space for me. Like, this is a Saturday, and if I have to keep asking, hey, well, who has a question, who has a question? I know you have questions. I have questions, and I've been doing this for 15 years, and you're not asking them. To me, that means, okay, like you don't know what to ask, and maybe if we get the creative juices flowing with some live product sourcing, that will you know, create questions, and then we'll try to put in like a 10, 15 minute Q&A every session. So that's gonna be a big change starting next year for uh, the beginner hour. But, but for now, we're gonna open it up for any questions. For an anybody that has a question on the stream? They just want you to say the name again of that tariff, what is tariff it? Tariff Terminator. Tariff Terminator. Yeah. I'll find the website. And yeah, Tariff Terminator. And you can either Google Tariff Terminator, and there's, a, there's, a, there's something for it, but it, it's whole new worldwide. I think it's whole new worldwide, H-O-N-U worldwide, dot com slash Tariff Terminator, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
But if, if you are importing products into the country, like, it is irresponsible of you not to do this, right? And I don't have a cutoff that. They are a sponsor. That's part of the reason why, um, in addition to their 3PL services, that I, that I was sold on them being a sponsor, beside it being Afo Lapi, who was going to be on the cruise. He's a repeat speaker on the cruise. Um, but it's, it's, it's paper performance. If, if they don't save you money, you make nothing. And when, if they do save you money, they make money once, and it's like $2.99. Where's, where's Andres going? Nah. You left your water thing. You leave nowhere without your water thing. Okay. So, so anybody has any questions? Feel free to ask. Uh, I have something I want to show first. Like if you don't, or, or ask. Go ahead. We'll, we'll deal with the question. Uh, for um, the carrot thing, should I uh, contact my free pool water first and then get the pool? Nope. No. Contact Avalabi first. You can only pay Avalabi if you can save you money. So you're only paying if you can do that. So he saved me 16 percent on a pair. So if you're bringing a container in and he saved, I don't know, let's, let's say the container is 20 grand, 15 percent on that. And if you're going to buy bring that product over and over and over again, you more than pay yourself. Okay. And so you only pay if he gets your money back. Kind of like a key, though, right? You only pay them if they find you something. Okay. So I yeah. think he was giving me the example of someone brought over a bicycle and the tariff was like 35 percent. But if you take the bicycle apart and you take the seat off the bicycle and you strip the bicycle seat separately, you can drop down the tariff to like 11%. So just knowing those import tariffs and those HTS codes mm -hmm. and how to manipulate them in terms of what you set, what you're going to bring over. And when I say manipulate, I mean within the guidelines to make sure you don't get a flag or anything. But he knows those inside and out. And there's thousands of those codes. And your freight forwarder, unfortunately, is just not going to be that granular. Because all they care about is just the freight. They don't really care about the, the code because that really doesn't do anything for them. They make money on the shipping. So you truly have somebody looking at the HTS codes for your benefit. Okay. Yeah. In, in, in addition to that, I got two things on that. One is if they can't save you any money, you pay nothing, and they say good job. But what they'll then ask you if you want to do this, and I think this is really cool, and they have an amazing track record with this as well, is I was about to say this isn't sponsored by them, but it actually is. Like the group is sponsored by them. Is that say you have, uh, say you're getting taxed on the bike, but if the bike frame is X percent some different alloy, it can now be classified as something totally different. You actually get a credit <laughs> for, or like there's a lot of cool things you could do. You could have it made in a different way or change the The reason it's charged this is because the handles on these are blank material. If you change the handle, it becomes a totally different thing. So they're really good at that. And you pay nothing for that unless they save you a lot of money. So, so do it. Um, I talk all the time about differentiation. Oh, the other thing I want to add on that is like what Tom just did there and explained. That's what the group's about. Like you jump in there and do it. One of the ways to like really grow as a seller is to sort of pay it forward and, and teach it. Right? It was a shocker for me starting the group. So when I started this group, I was already a, a successful seller. But I really grew as a seller being up here and helping other people do it and really having to like think, like, why in the world does it go that way? Right? So wherever you are in your like, selling journey or whatever, jump in and, and, and say something. Right? That helps. The other thing is you guys hear me talk a lot about when it comes to private label. Yes, there's different ways to do it. You could just totally go off the data and look for some inefficiency and been like, oh, I'm going to sell this because, you know, Helium 10 said that this is a good opportunity, right? I really don't think you should do that. But um, I'm more of the find something you're passionate about or would like to be passionate about, right? Find that there's a market for this thing on Amazon and differentiate. Like, I do a lot more than that, but those are the three, like, major buckets you guys hear me, like, beat the drum on all the time. So. I'm going to give you guys an example, and I have something to pass around. So working with somebody, just work, let's, working, we're going to say, brainstorming something together, right? And this person wants to launch a Bluetooth speaker, OK? If you want to sell a Bluetooth speaker, can you, can you, what are some Bluetooth speakers that you know of? Like, think of some brands. Bose. Bose. Yeah. What else? JPL. JPL, right? That's. So we agree, like some big players in that space, right? So, what do you think? Some main. What do you think? Some of those keywords are going to be that you want to go after. 
just, you know, there's no right or wrong answer here. Like, what do you think? Like, if you were going to go on Amazon and search for a product and you wanted to get a Bluetooth speaker, what would you search for? Wireless speaker. Best, best Bluetooth speaker. Best speaker. Wireless speaker. Yeah, wireless. Waterproof speaker. Right? You're going to do all these different things. Who do you think dominates all that? The people you just said, right? Um, or, again, not, not picking on China, not just saying it because we love Ting, but like some of these other people in China that are willing to just work off like pennies and they're the actual factory and it's cost nothing to ship over here. And this is like, that, that, that category is saturated either by these name brands or by XYZ, CYN, J6521 brand names, right? So like, that's who's there. No win. If you come to me and say you want to launch a product and you're ready to go all in on a Bluetooth speaker, I'm going to tell you you probably want to be sitting at, and this might not even be high enough, but like on the low end, but like you want to be doing like a 10K ad budget per month. And I'm going to say, hold on. Like this is going to be, you need, the person needs to really be knowing what they're doing, probably going to need a lot more than that. But let's just use that, let's just use that number, right? And don't think about profits for like a long time, okay? So 10,000 plus dollars a month in ads, no profits for a while. You're going to be on just like, let's, let's claw our way to where we can start getting some organic sales, right? That's what that looks like. So I'm talking to this person. This person's, a, this person's into like ex-military, has friends that are ex-military, not an email list of ex-military, not a big community of ex-military. That's just what he's into. Likes to go to the range here. Uh, I know it's like a hot subject, like a weird subject for some people, but who likes to go to the gun range or something, right? Got a few head nods, right? So we know you. Like, we saw the flag, bro. No, I'm just kidding. No. Why did you raise my hand? No, no, no. But, but like, that's a thing. A lot of people are. So got friends like that. Um, so he, he wanted to get into the blue, Bluetooth speaker space, right? So he decided to get a mold. He decided to differentiate. We were able to have that conversation. And the person's like, yeah, that makes sense. So what did they spend? They spent, they, they spent about, about $12,000. Like, maybe even fifteen, but let's say $12,000 in mold fees to create something different, something that looks massively different in the main image. And you're probably thinking, oh my God, that's a lot of money for molds. And that's where you, a lot of people just drop off. Like, I'm not going to do that, man. I don't even know if this thing's going to work, right? So he did that. This is the product. It's a landmine. It's a Claymore landmine. It's a Bluetooth speaker, right? I'm going to pass it around, right? Been going on about two months. Now or less. Can anyone take a guess on the sales? Now, as of this morning? Huh? In, in, in 20K? Anybody else? In units or dollar amounts? In do dollar amounts right now. I'm gonna break down, I'm gonna break down the whole thing. What's he selling it for? 80 bucks. What's his landed cost? I don't know the exact number, and I don't know if he'd let me say it on live. So I don't, I, I don't know. Not being cagey, like, I connect you with the guy, though, and he's open about that stuff. I just want to make sure that I, I don't. It's, it's low. It's very low. Like, it's massive profit margin. Like, it's almost all profit margin, like way over 50% profit margin. Around 30 bucks to go? Selling for uh, is cost? I, I, I'm gonna, again, I don't know the exact one. I don't know if, how close I can get, but I'm going to say it sells for 80 bucks. I would put his landed cost. Landed to FBA at 15 max. Wow. Max. I mean, this is, at the end of the day, what goes inside of this that makes the speakers not yeah. much. And no one is expecting surround sound from this, right? And it's, and it's plastic. Waterproof? Yeah. It looks waterproof. Yeah, it's waterproof. Any more, any more guesses? No wrong answer. Don't be afraid. Just guess. No, no, 50K. 50K. I'm going to say 50K. Yes, 50K. Um, as of this morning, does anyone want to know how much they've spent on PPC for this product to do that, generate that sales? How many months has been Second. No, we're not even full with the second month, but second month. That's called two months. I'll say 5K. 5K. $750. What? Wow. Right. Awesome. Right. That's amazing. Brutal. Brutal category spent 12 to 15k in a mold once and spent that so like was it worth doing the mold yeah well i would say so oh, yeah. they're recouping that mold cost every month now yeah. <laughs> just in what they're not spending in ppc and that's it 
is this thing ever going to be the number one organic position on Amazon for Bluetooth speakers? No. Is this person going to be a deep eight-figure seller off of this thing? Yes. Well, I don't know about deep, but th this is, this is going to be a 15 to $20 million a year product, right? Pay-per-click, pay like what you need to spend to get this found. Because when this started, it was on page non-existent. You have to advertise it to get it to the top, right? You guys want to check it out too, by the way? Pass it around? Sure. Are, we, are you going to like, talk about PPC during next year or in the class, no, no, class meeting? Yeah, so the question, the question in case it wasn't picked up by the Cube is that are we going to have PPC themed events next year or PPC topics? Um, I don't know. I, I'll tell you what, what, let me explain that. We used to, pre-COVID, have in-person PPC meetup events. This is what happens. There is a percentage of people in the group, like not picking on him, but you just asked me what PPC was, right? So there's a percentage of people in the group that are not with that yet, right? Then there's a, no, it's a small percentage too. Like he'll know it and he'll never forget it. And by the way, if you've ever had private label and need to pay ads, you immediately know what the hell it is, right? <laughs> and never forget it. There's another percentage of people that it's a very dense topic to talk about on a Saturday, right? Um, and then you have the biggest percentage of people that have learned enough about it that they know they should hire someone to probably do it and they should focus on finding new products. So it's, 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 it's one of those topics that you would think, wow, we're gonna talk about that every single Saturday. The next phase we did is during COVID, when we took the group to Zoom, yeah. we started having every other Wednesday Zoom PPC themed topic. That might come back next week. I mean, not next week. That might come back next year, but it wouldn't be until Q2. So we're looking at something, if, it's, if it starts again, it's either Q2, Q2 or 100% Q3. So it's gonna come back next year. It will be Zoom based. Um, yeah, but that's the thing. It's not gonna be an in-person one. Okay. What about the reviews? Good review by Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. got submitted to Vine. It's got very little reviews. Four, four reviews, right? Yeah, it's got very, very, very little reviews. Yeah, very, very little reviews. He just launched, what, two months ago? Yeah. Good timing. Wow. Well, it depends. Technically, Q4 is bad launching time for launches. As a matter of fact, have, huh? How much is he selling? I, how many units? I just looked at the dollar amount, so now it's about 50. I think it's like 49-ish right now, but I'm just saying 50. Do you know how many units he has on the I wonder what his keywords are. Yeah. How's he? I mean, I know that's what I want to say, but I wonder what his main targeted you yeah. know, keywords are. I don't know if I, I don't know if I can share that, but military. I don't know if I share that, but if you had a product that was in the military space yeah. and you were interested in doing PPC on it, you would be very clear what the PPC ad set is. And he's already ranked number one on almost all of them. Mm, he's either the dominant ad that shows up for all the relevant keywords that would be associated with that on PPC or organic. And the thing is the other people that are trying to rank on that have products that sell for 15 bucks. So the fact that your product is costing so much more and because the mold is done, it's done good. Like, again, you don't want, could you improve that in the way it looks and make it look sleek? Yeah, but you're not looking for some William Sonoma product. Like it's a Claymore, like Claymores are kind of rugged and they look like that, you know what I mean? Like 50K, so maybe about what? Couple hundred units. Yeah. 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 Five reviews. Let's see how those reviews come back for those three hundred. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll be good. Like. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you know, that, that's just. Just I just wanted to put that out there. How do people find that that speaker? What are they typing in to find it? That, that's what I don't know if I can share. I, again, not being Kate. Like, I'm trying to share as much as I could, and I got clearance from the person to be able to share that. But it, think about it. If you wanted yeah. to search for something like that, you would see. Yeah. You would see what those keywords are. They're not something that everyone searches for for that. But the thing is, there is enough. That's one of those things that I told you about when I'm talking about stairway to PL. You're looking at speaker, no. Wireless Bluetooth speaker. And you step away, and now you start getting into like shower speaker, and you start niching down. This is probably like six steps away. 
Uh, I thought one of the things we always talked about was not doing electronics from China. I, 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 yeah, so like, I don't think you should make your own food and sell your own food. I think if you're looking for low-hanging fruit with the least complications as possible, that you should avoid electronics, right? But some people are passionate about that. And if you are, yeah, there's a huge market for it. You just really need to like dot your I's and cross your T's. Do I want anything to do with electronics? No, but if I was passionate about it, I would totally do electronics. Most people don't want to do fragile stuff. I love fragile stuff. So, so I just, yeah. There's a lot of ways you can take that speaker. My gosh. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Garden, by the pool. Absolutely. Put on a stake or a bunker. Or no, those. different shapes, like an anchor, a butterfly, a beetle. Absolutely. A bug, a Right, so the so, so the type of the type of differentiator that is, and I have a YouTube video on on it. If you want to survive through this YouTube channel that I put out, but I, one of my top two YouTube videos that I put out, not top two in ranking, but the two that I put out over the last few months, I did one. And again, I was new to YouTube, newer, much newer to YouTube then. You might even notice that I'm looking at some notes on the side. If you can forgive that and you just look at it, I give a top ten defensibility chart on how to approach differentiating a product. That one falls under number three, which is shape. Right, which is a tricky one. A lot of people will just see shape and they just make the circle a little bigger, right? But I wouldn't sell thermoses, but if you were to create a thermos and pay for the mold and do a heart, you would have a very carved out category that's very specific to people that like hearts. You would be able to sell it for a lot more and you would do really well on Amazon or almost anywhere, but especially on Amazon. So that's differentiation by shape. Um, done right, right? So again, when you're thinking about that and you're ever thinking like, man, I don't want to pay a few thousand dollars for the mold. I want to test this first and be safe to see how it works. That is not safe, right? That is death by a million cuts. It is hemorrhaging on PPC because you're unable to differentiate forever, <laughs> right? Bite that bullet one time, strategically go in that way. It's going to be able to land a design patent on that. Like that's, that's happening. Like, you know, like that's happening. Um, without without even getting into like that with an American flag, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's there's so many ways this thing can go and turn into something great. So I'm I'm gonna stop beating the drum on that. You get the point. Think about that as you're doing your private label products, right? Like that is actually how you make more money. That is actually how PPC becomes easy, like by differentiating. That's perfect. And that category is just. Sorry, that is bloody. It is a red ocean, right? That's how you do it. What other questions everybody has now that we're in the beginner hour? I know that wasn't very beginner, but. It's really cool. Yeah, it's super cool. This is really, really cool. And you're not even like. Uh, yeah, this is not even like. I'm right, but you, you'll buy that. You'll buy that. Yeah. <laughs> when you saw it, you'd freaking buy it. Especially as a gift. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool if you're like. And I love what you like said. Tom, Tom, that looked great in your office. My clients would love that. Yeah, but I would a grenade, would a grenade uh, shotgun. Put like a ticker and put one on each side. <coughs> blowing up. Put Claymore mines around a client. Yeah, I love it. Front towards party. And I like okay, well, what, what questions, any questions on the stream? No, they just want to know the keywords. But you're really they just want to know the keywords? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I would like, I mean, at that point, I might as well tell you the factory and, and everything. <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess my question is, that's a pretty big risk to do something like that, to do it in the shape of something very specific and very niche audience specific. There must have been a lot of research that went into deciding to do that, or was this just because you liked that category of data? Well, the person liked that industry, and it was kind of like, hey, I think you should do something you're passionate about, would like to be passionate about. Marry the two. Um, just, just marry the two, and what, what can we come up with? And when you marry the two, and you're like, I really like maybe electronics, um, and I really like the man cave and my vibe in the man cave might be blank and like what are the things that you would like in the man cave would be the hardest to get and you start just brainstorming session you come up with it I, I would not that we disagree but I would almost disagree and I think it's like faulty logic that a lot of people have is that it is more risky to do that it's not if you're gonna get into Bluetooth speakers and you were to do something that looked just like what is out of the box in China that looks just like the JBL or the Beats or whatever, but at half the price. That is much riskier than going into a Bluetooth speaker that is like this. It, it is. It, it, it just psychologically, 
we're used to seeing, oh, that's the one that works. That's the shape that's number one bestseller. Let me get that. I can get it cheaper. I think I can beat them on reviews. I'm willing to make less. That is a bad, bad way to go about it. Yeah. Um, did that help at all? Like, you like seeing stuff like that? Yeah. Anyway, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, what, uh, also, by the way, with Amazon and profit compression happening, this is going into another topic, but we'll like segue from this. We were just talking about it yesterday, a few of us got together, and there's a very sweet spot on Amazon, by the way, like all this talk of like how competitive it is and profit margins being compressed and CPC going up, all that's true, right? But if you're selling a product in like the 100 to 200, $250 range, it's a very sweet landscape <laughs> on, on Amazon, right? Nobody, nobody, unless you're just buying bad products or like you got it at bad cost, like nobody is complaining about CPCs right now that sells products for 150 to 250 bucks. Like there's no issues that it went up 60 cents. <laughs> um, and, and some of that, in this case, you have low cost and borderline sweet spot on price. So that's it. So like consider, consider those higher priced products um, and it's less risky. Like, reprogram yourself into that. Whatever courses you took, whatever else you've been told, reprogram yourself into that on like what's risky and what's not. What else we got? Who has any other questions? Yeah. Oh, do you want to talk about um, Mr. Freeman? Master message he sent in the group about price change next year. Raymond? He Ramon, Ramon, Ramon. Oh, Ramon. Ramon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, price changes next year. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that ties into what we just said with uh, you know, compression on profits and stuff like that. Yeah, no, it's every year and around the September, October-ish range, there's massive changes on Amazon every year, right? And it has ripple effects into other areas on Amazon. You could set your watch, your calendar to this for next year. Also around this time, they, do, they announce their price hikes. Every company raises their prices. Who here, who here had a subscription to Netflix when it first came out, right? Have you looked at what the bill is now? It's the reason why you cut cable. <laughs> it's the reason why you cut cable, right? So like, every, they, they didn't do that at once. Every year, it went up like 80 cents or a dollar, right? And then and now here we sit at like 27 bucks, right? Amazon's no different. Okay, so, so, so yeah, Netflix is like 27 bucks now per month. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, oh my God. Now couple that with your Disney Plus subscription and like three others, and you're like, it'd be cheaper to get cable, right? I, I knew their price was nine ninety nine. So it was years ago. It was a long. That wasn't even the start, yeah. but yeah, it was a long time ago. <laughs> you live a good life, then that means you don't look at the bills on that. <laughs> <laughs> you have a good life. So prices go up. Amazon's prices went up. Amazon has a lot of different areas of prices. So one of the ones, they, they, there's a bunch of them, and I have not been able to completely unpack it. I was in Tampa Wednesday, we drove back on Thursday, catch up on Friday, and now here we are, right? But uh, I, next week I plan on, or during the Christmas break, I plan on um, unpacking it more. Some of the ones, though, that, that really stood out are, one, there's now a kind of like a receiving fee. So like you pay money to ship your products to Amazon. We get that. But now there's a receiving fee per unit. So very similar to a 3PL that you'd work with, and this is like 26 or 27 cents per unit to receive starting in March. The other one is like we've spent the last two years or so being as lean as possible into going into Amazon because of their warehouse fees and getting stuck with inventory. That gets expensive. Um, but now there's a penalty if you have four weeks or less. So if you have four weeks or less of inventory of your product, they're gonna charge you for that. So you need to have 30 days or more. So there's a penalty for long, and there's a penalty for too little. And then this is the part where it gets a little murky for me, but apparently there's an exception if you bring your products over AGL, so Amazon Global Logistics, straight into AWD. There is no per unit fee in receiving. <laughs> And so like some stuff is forgiven if you use AWD, some stuff doesn't apply if you use AGL. Um, my concern in all this is with all this, like my non-legal concern, by the way, is like with all the saber rattling going on with like antitrust, 
I feel like this is a bad time for Amazon to do this and kind of say, we charge this unless you use our stuff. Like, it's just not the, the vibe I feel like you'd want to give out when that's going on, but what do I know? Um, another one is, well, if you sell Merchant Fulfilled, by the way, no, no changes for you. Like, there's nothing, no, no issues for you. Except if you do, you probably don't sell much. The, what's, a, what's another fee that they had in there that was like, what? Well, one of the fees went down. So the Amazon FBA fee went down. But when you look at that cost going down versus what's going up, it's still a higher fee than they've ever done um, across the board. What else? Storage fees went up. Some stuff for oversize actually went down. Oversize itself is no longer a category. Like they did away with oversize. And small and light. Small and light. Small stay the same. Anything under 10 bucks still. So did they remove that, that small and light? The small and light, yeah, the small and light categories, like that as a classification is gone, oversized classification is gone. They just have different names, mm -hmm. but all in the same thing. So yeah, there was a lot. A lot there you have to unpack. And yeah, I think it's smart of you to be thinking about it. We may need to have an event, as boring as it sounds, just breaking that down and revisiting, like, what are all those hidden costs that are associated? They're not hidden. They're, they've announced it, but you know what I mean? Like, the ones that are a little harder to look at. But I think the people that were hit the hardest on this, if you're a PL seller, it's kind of like, not much is changing, right? People want to make a conversation about, should I raise prices or should I not raise prices? Like, that's, that's I think, dependent on the category, right? But you're not hit as hard as a private label seller. If you're a reseller, or most resellers, I think this is going to put some resellers out of business. Um, I mean, yeah. Reseller and wholesaler is the same thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're a wholesaler, <laughs> I'm just saying, when I say reseller, I'm encompassing retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, and wholesale versus just wholesale, which is just singling out wholesale, right? But if you're a, a reseller, um, especially an arbitrage seller, 99% of them, in case Gabe's listening, um, you're, you're, um, you're in trouble. I mean, think about it. When you're getting some arbitrage stuff, you're not getting 30 days of inventory, right? So like you, all, all your stuff, just you might as well just bolt that on. And if you were just flipping some stuff because it had high volume and you make a dollar, you're no longer making that dollar. You're not making anything. You're losing per sale. So like, it's a, uh, this is another reason why, especially as we start the new year, you're gonna, you know, our group is not an influencer group, but we, this year, I didn't do a very good job at, I try to balance the group out in the sense of the amount of private label presentations we have, wholesale presentations we have, and arbitrage presentations we have. And this year, I really dropped the ball on the amount of arbitrage presentations we had. Um, part of it was the year before, uh, Gabe and, and someone else was really like leading the charge on that. And then everyone got busy. And then I just didn't, wasn't top of mind for me to step up and talk about it. Because it's not something I do. Um, However, I don't recommend you start with arbitrage anymore. As a matter of fact, if you're doing arbitrage right now, I think your time would be better spent doing the Amazon Influencer Program. So this year coming up, we're going to have more events on the Amazon Influencer Program. Um, ways to get started, ways to scale, tricks, how to expand off the Amazon Influencer Program using that, those, those same videos or the same content you're doing. Um, we're going to have a lot more topics on that. But this rule, because of rules like this, the new programs and the new rule changes and the price hikes and all that stuff that Amazon comes up with, none of them for the last like decade have been favorable to resellers. You know what I mean? So like, I think the writing's on the wall there. Uh, wholesale's pretty solid because you're building a relationship with that, with that client. Um, but I'm no longer going to be recommending arbitrage as the place to start. Like, so don't expect next year to have very many, if at all, presentations on on arbitrage, but we'll kind of supplant them with, or replace them with, substitute them with, uh, influencer program. Fair? Are anybody here who the majority of their business is arbitrage, by the way? No? OK. Does everybody here know what Amazon influencer program is? Good? All right. And, and I think that when I say I'm going to start recommending that instead of arbitrage, I'm talking about for the people that are just starting. But I also recommend you do it even if you haven't just started, it's just as an additional stream of income because it's that easy. And PPC becomes a lot more exciting when you're funding it with just passive income that you're making, right? Well, as close to passive as it can get. What other questions we have? Any 
Fernando? Nope. Love their Lexi's back. excited. Who? Lexi. Lexi. She says, yay. Um, going back to the going back to the Amazon raising its costs, what I'm sensing from the cost going up in terms of the stuff that you're sending in, I'm almost feeling like Amazon wants you to send it into their warehouses. Because if you send it into their warehouses, they're gonna be able to help make sure that you don't go under that four week supply limit. And if you send it into their warehouses, I don't think you're beholden to that 24 cents per unit. I think if you send it into the warehouse, I think you're, you don't pay that fee. So I think another way to look at this is you may not have to have a, a warehouse here or wherever your business is, you may be able to send that stuff directly into the warehouse. And I think that's Amazon may be trying to look at things logistically so they don't run in and out of stock and be able to control that a little bit better on their deliverables. Because you've seen that now where it says when you're returning something, it's like, hey, if you want to return two items and help us save on shipping. So I think they're maybe looking at that. That's my Yeah, I, I think that's the logic. I definitely don't think it's like we want to screw sellers over. But I, I guess it's uncomfortable any time they're making the decision for us. So or think, forcing the decision. Do you think we should we should look at like doing a cost like analysis of sending stuff directly into the warehouse, and even if it's you know, six months worth of warehouse, of, you know, of a of, of product, just to avoid a potential backlog? I mean, what's that number? Three months that you send in? Six months you send in? I mean, I'm just trying to. Yeah. Um, I think I wanted to wait until the beginning of like March of next year to actually come out and say I got enough data on this to say it. But it definitely looks like this is the case that AWD is a solid option to do. Um, majority of people that I talk to on this, it's rapid check-in times, just like it used to be, like a long time ago, um, like same week. <laughs> um, the other thing is, and this is the one that I wanted more data on because it doesn't happen all the time, <clears throat> is when you have your products in AWD, which is Amazon Warehouse Distribution, Right? By the way, if I ever use acronyms or something like that and you don't know, like this, you definitely should ask. But like Amazon Warehouse Distribution, which is just, it's an FBA center with a different name. And supposedly they don't just send inventory to the buyer from AWD. But one of the things you can set up from AWD is a, like a rule, if you will, that says anytime I'm running low in Amazon FBA, fulfill so I don't run out of stock. Now, the question is, how long is it going to take them from AWD to get it showing available on Amazon FBA versus how long it's taking when you to send it for it to be live in FBA? I'm seeing it, and they say this does not happen, right? I'm seeing it as instant. Um, and the only way that would be is if they said, okay, they're running low. Let's send from AWD to FBA. We know it's in route. If this is going to run out, don't let it. And we'll just fulfill the orders until it's checked in, and then we'll stop. That's the only thing that makes sense to me, but they say they don't do that. But um, my biggest problem with that workflow is it requires you to ship directly, basically, into Amazon from China. And most of you know I'm, I'm not for that. Um, I, I think way too much could go wrong for that uh, in that scenario. But there's plenty of people that do it that don't have an issue. Like, if, some, if the slightest thing is off that you missed an inspection, the slightest thing on the, the country where it's manufactured, say China, and then shipped into Amazon, and it gets all the way into AWD, they're not going to fix it for you. You're going to need to recall it. <laughs> and then that's just going to cripple any, any, any profit you have. You're going to lose. So that, that's, a, that's a dilemma. But it looks like, yeah, it looks like a cost analysis is in order and that the workflow moving forward might be factory, AWD, AWD, maybe AGL, Amazon Global Logistics, Amazon Warehouse Deals, FBA, customer. Uh, kind of in the, the uh, stuff. With FBA, um, <clears throat> so whenever, whenever you send in a shipment to FBA, and it's in transit, they, they know they're aware of it coming in. Will that, could, will they sell off of that or do they have to actually receive it and like vouch for it and count the items? When, when they, they have to receive it, have it in inventory and ship it out. 
Okay. Because mm -hmm. so, sometimes you'll see it as like somebody could buy it, but they're going to see that it's a, they'll they'll won't be shipped until blank, mm -hmm. or instead of being able to receive it in two days, they'll receive it in a week and a half. Yeah, I don't know. We, we've seen stuff where we've sent stuff in. <clears throat> we've had low inventory of items, and then we sent more in, and then we've been selling over our current inventory for the stuff that's in. That's probably what's happening. Okay. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Makes sense. What else we got? We got like one more minute. If there's any other questions, no? Okay. <laughs> If anybody wants to, William? Yeah, I have a question. You have plenty of questions you should ask. <laughs> One is beautiful outside in Miami, Saturday. That's why you're here, to ask the questions. One more, like, currently question? Mm -hmm. Do all those steps, if, like, it ends up becoming that long process, is, is that, I mean, I'm assuming it is more, it's more, cost more every time It'll be more affordable in this one. Oh yeah, I guess it's significantly guess it's relative, more. Right? Yeah, it's definitely a lot more affordable to bring your products over via AGL if you're shipping into Amazon, like by far. A lot. Yeah. Like you could add a few other layers after that, and still come out much cheaper than if you did it yourself. What I just said. So, so no. Then if you're adding AWD. You're saving on out of stock times. You're saving on, it's ridiculously cheap if you want to draw, say drop ship or multi-channel fulfill, which is like I have inventory in AWD, I have a Shopify or Etsy or whatever sale, um, and I just send a one-off order. Currently with FBA, you do a multi-channel fulfillment order for that and send that one unit, put in the information, and they send it from your inventory. And it costs, it's, it's better than if you printed the postage in most cases, but it's an even deeper discount when you do that off AWD. So in, in every case, it's going to be significantly cheaper, but the savings that you do with AGL just change everything. Right? And I think they're just subsidizing it. Like they're, take, they're doing what they did with Seller Central, and they're like taking losses on the shipping just to get people to use it, I think. I think if you're going to, going to do AGL, per Carlos, what he said, if you're going to do AGL from China to the United States, make sure that you have a company like B Trust inspect the you know what out of it videotape and all kinds of stuff of the product before it gets into Amazon. Um, do that extra step and make sure that what's being put on the boat because it's going straight into Amazon, so you're not going to have a chance to check it. So make sure that at least you have, that's a, a workaround <coughs> to not have it come to you and then have you send it to Amazon. But make sure you, you get someone to check that. Spend those extra dollars that you're saving on investing in that, that truck, that inspection company would be my, my thought on using it to and maybe like if you're ordering a 40, you may need to consider ordering like a, a 40 and a 20. If you need to have inventory for other purposes and send the 20 to you, send a 40 AGL. So consider maybe two 20s, 120 AGL and a 20 to you and feel it out to where you could, if you don't like what's happening or something changed, you can fire small parcel delivery shipments into FBA. You could use a 3PL domestically. You could hold it, like. But AGL is not faster than regular. It's shipping. not faster. It's not faster. You can, can count almost double the amount of time with AGL into Amazon warehousing services. So if that's the case, maybe keep a little bit of inventory here in your warehouse so that you can, if that boat takes longer than expected, if you're in holiday time, that you at least have the ability to send in some master cases and send that in. So I have some stuff in reserve here. So ideally, it would be. Stuff in Amazon, but also stuff you, you have in the event that it runs out and you can't replenish your past not using AGL. Sorry, can you repeat that again? I'm just kidding. <laughs> What's a buy box? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, just, uh, I know this is probably the same answer, but <clears throat> with the going off the my uh, FBA scenario. <clears throat> Um, if they do a fulfillment center like transfer within the country, will those still be sellable, or will it see, show delayed shipping for the buyer? If it's in AWD, uh, if it's in uh, like FBA, if, if you do FBA. Say, I'm sorry. Say the question again. So say say we something send something into FBA, you know, a quantity of 100, and then 
I'm noticing like they'll they'll transfer like 20 and send it to like California. They'll send 20 to somewhere upstate New York or somewhere. Will those be sellable too? While transferred. While they're being transferred internally within Amazon's fulfillment centers. I'm sorry. So I, I, I'm getting part of what you're saying, but I don't understand. You're talking about the way it is right now. Like when you send products to Amazon, FBA. they get it and then they redistribute it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. right. We're seeing they're they're sending our right. Products so most of the thing. time, it's not going to be available for sale and actually ship until the products are checked in. So you only see three available and the other 77 are floating around. In some cases though, people see it as available and they can check out. It's just, it takes longer for them to actually receive it and they see that longer time and check out. That also applies to the distributed inventory. Now when it comes from AWD, what I'm seeing so far, and this is like very early, is that when your products are in stock, you're running low they replenish them. They are replenishing the FBA centers that they want. So they're not just sending it all to one center, one FBA center, they're sending a few everywhere. So it's, it, I've not run out of, I've not seen anybody run out of stock if they were feeding AWD correctly. There was never like a man, I, I tried to time it and I ran, it looks like I'm gonna run out of stock for two days, like, it seems seamless. Yeah. It, I, I just don't want anyone to get confused with the acronym. It's, it's another warehouse. But Amazon has FBA centers for uh, somebody buys something and they ship it out to the customer, right? Okay. AWD is more of like long-term storage okay. where they don't ship out directly to the customer right now. Got it. You guys are going on the cruise, right? No. You're not? I was going on game time. I was going to run a marathon, but I'm injured my leg. So. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about the leg. Yeah, that's right. So you are going now? I might. I might. Okay. I might. I'm monitoring it. If, I, if it gets better, I'm going to run it. But if not, well, this is the last week that there's cabins, by the way. You think so? Yeah, no, yeah. I thought it was going to be last week, but this is it. All right, I'm looking into this week. Um, yeah. So think Amazon warehouse deals, long-term distribution, long-term work, long-term storage, uh, FBA, right? So it's like if you had a prep center, which I don't think you should stop working with prep centers, but like if you have a prep center, it, it's acting as like the prep center now, and they're trying to position themselves as why would you need anybody else? And one of the other perks we do is we can make sure you stay in stock. As long as we have inventory, we'll make sure you stay in stock in FBA. Right. Or set inventory because uh, next month, all factory uh, no take new order. Right, yeah, well, that's a, that's because a good one. Because this last last because next month very hot, factory no need new order. Yeah, I would even say it's too late right now, but if you are going to place an order in China, like, it needs to happen now. Next um, order maybe ma March. Yeah, because of Chinese New Year. Yes, this last month oh, for set order. Month. Yeah, so... This year it's when? February. This month, February. The last February. Four, February. Ten February. Um, yeah. But before ten, one week, uh, all all factory closed. If some people go home, yeah. Go home. Definitely. He remembers. When do you think the final day to place an order in China is? Now. Like, depending on the lead. I thought it was always like January. Well. My concern whenever I've placed stuff in January is if it had a longer lead time, sometimes, a lot of the times, it just gets left in like limbo because everybody left. And it doesn't get dealt with until, I, until they come back is what I, was, was the risk I saw, so I would say place it now. Depends on the needs too. Yeah. Like summer products, it's two weeks ago. <laughs> and delivery, delivery problem because no have containers. containers. Right, you could run out of ability, have containers to ship your stuff over and they're gonna be more expensive. And then it really doesn't get that much better the week or two after Chinese New Year comes back because then everybody who's stuck is trying to rush and get the first ones to come over, so it's a tough time. All right, any other questions before we get into the topic? Good. You're good? Yeah. All right. Yeah. You're staying? Good. All right. I made some uh, 
some notes so I could stay organized with this. If it was up to me, like the topic that we're going to have today, we would have like every month or like every other month because I think it's so important and it has to do with uh, goal setting and reevaluating your goals and big problem. Who here sets goals, by the way, in their business? Okay, everybody does, right? Well, that defies every poll I've ever seen, but okay, where are we at? Let's open this up. Anybody brave enough to sort of share how they go about setting their goals? Yeah, like what do you do? Is setting goals for you like in your head? Like and you just say, this year I'm going to do this. And, and you do it? Somebody want to throw them the cube so we can put them on the spot? He looks like he's regretting it. You're done? <laughs> oh, good. Now I know why everybody raised their hand. There's the cube. Comparing it to last year. And then, and then seeing what was able to get done based off new, new resources that have been acquired that year, can you go farther? Ideally? Yeah. The fact that you're blushing, I don't want to put you too much on the spot, but like, do you, and there's no right or wrong answer here, by the way, like whatever works for you, do it. But this isn't like, what you have memorized or what you've read. Like, if it's working for you, just keep doing that. Um, what I'm hoping to do today is, like, we all get a chance to see how everybody else is kind of approaching their goals and that you could take from me and from everybody else, like, discard whatever you think doesn't apply to you and then grab whatever you think would work or improve your flow and add it. That's it. I don't think you're going to add anything from Andres at the rate this is going, but, like, right, but um, <laughs> um, do you... What would, do you want to share what your goals were last year? Did you come close to hitting them? Like, how did you go about setting them? Well, it was here. So you're looking at, you, you did it here. I remember. Give me a second to pull it up. The fact that he doesn't have it by memory, I mean, this is going to be good. Um, anybody else want to share how they go about it? And let me ask you something. When do you usually do this? I usually start trying to put it together in September for the other year. It usually takes me a while, and there's different businesses. Um, and one thing I used to neglect a lot, and that's fairly recent for me, actually since about halfway through this group starting, is I never used to set personal goals. It was always just business goals. And I found that a lot of my failures with my business goals were that they were actually like in conflict with my personal goals had I set them. And had I set them, I would have realized, oh my God, like, like if my personal goal was to spend more time in Miami and with my family, and my business goal was to get a weekly speaking gig, <laughs> in my industry to promote my product um, all around the USA, like that would be in conflict. That, that's obvious. But it wasn't so obvious when I was doing some of my goals. Like they were very in conflict. So anybody else want to share this? Tom, do you need to bring your note? You have two pads. Okay. I do uh, personal goals. So it could be um, what you've done personally in terms of what your own personal goals are trying to be, whether that's fitness or you know, learning something new, educational waking up earlier, whatever that is in structure, and both of them have the same theme to them. What worked well, what didn't work well, and what are you gonna change? And when it comes to the business, it's, it's just like that. But I think with your personal side of things, I think you should have short-term goals and long-term goals. As a, and, and not just in business, but also in your personal stuff. So if that means I wanna make X number of dollars per year, or I wanna travel to Paris, you know, those are your long-term goals. It's always nice to you know, cross one of those off the list as an accomplishment. I think when you find out that you write down these goals as to what you want to actually do. I'm going to get them the cube. They're not as vast as you think they are. They're not as big as they, they, they are. You don't want as much as you think you do. So long-term personal, short-term, short I mean, long, long, long-term and short-term personal goals, I think are really important. And writing them down is key. Writing those goals down and then looking at them Whatever your schedule is, once a month, once a quarter. Um, the more you write them down, the bigger the chance that you are to achieve them. I think the incoming class of 1985 at Harvard, they asked the incoming class, they said, how many of you have a written business plan for the next four years of your college life? 2% of the people raised their hand. <clears throat> they came back 10 years later, those 2% of the people that raised their hand in that Harvard class had a greater net worth than the combined 98% of the people who didn't. 
So I think 80% of statistics are made up, but there's 50% chance of that happening too. <laughs> yeah. That's a good indicator. If you're looking at your phone, that means you wrote them down. Yeah, yeah. I have it here. Uh, also, <clears throat> I remember last time we had spoken about uh, writing down the uh, what was accomplished yeah. during during the year before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's the accomplishment part, and then there's um, the writing of the new ones. And, and we're not gonna, we're not going to go like in a circle, and everybody doesn't have to go. But does anyone else want to jump in as well? We got uh, Andres took a shot at it. Uh, 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 Tom cited Harvard. I'm, I'm jumping <laughs> in with, with what they said as well. I like to write everything. I mean, one starts in the mind, like I want to do something. Oh, I idealize, OK, like, for example, I want to, like, January, I want to do this and that. But it doesn't, it's not as effective as when you write it down. I like to write things down. Some goals might take a little longer than others. So I personally like to write what I'm going to do in that day, the small goals. And then when I scratch them off at the end of the week, like for example, on a Sunday I say, um, I'm going to contact the supplier, I'm going to do this or whatever. Uh, if, I'll get if I get to accomplish that daily or at the end of the week, then I'll say, okay, you know what, I had a good week. And then I'll reward myself on something just to give me that boost. Um, one learns from mistakes, so whatever mistakes I made on my business on the year before, then I'll try to correct that, and that comes with the personal development as well. Because as you discover, when you work in your, on your business, you'll get to realize a lot of things about yourself that you didn't know unless you were having that different mindset, okay, I'm going to have to separate this, or I have to be more proactive into something because of the business. I have to talk to someone. So like, like they say, it, it goes hand in hand. So it helps you be aware of things you've got to do. So personally, I know I've done some things that were not for the best interest of my business, but it's a personal commitment to say, you know what, next year I'm gonna set this goal and I'm gonna make it better, I'm gonna get education, I'm gonna talk to someone, and that is the growth um, in business and personal. But personally, I like to, that's why I'm always with a little note, whatever I can write down, I'll write it. But I like to do I like a weekly list. So when, you know, a, a month is four weeks, so you feel really accomplished when you see that in a month you have done all these things. And if you don't do something one week, then you leave it for the next week. But it's a constant reminder yeah, that you have to do it. And then you, you do it, and you know, the span of a year, you'll see a big difference. And you take pride of yourself of what, what you did. So. Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to say the writing stuff down by far is like extremely powerful to do. And if you're not doing it, like, I, I can't emphasize enough how, how important it is to write down the goals. Um, when I first started, I didn't even think about goals or taxes, by the way. And, and I just was like, sell and be able to pay mortgage and Publix. Like that, was, <laughs> that, was, that was kind of it. And then you, 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 know, you started like, OK, this is not fun. And, and, then, and then goals started coming in. And then goals were very like, I just thought about them. And it was like a New Year's resolution you know, right after the grapes and running outside with the luggage, if you know what that means, and like doing all that. And I was like, well, this year we're going to do this. And then that died in January. And then I was like, I need to have a 15, 10, and five-year goal. That was, a, that was one for me that sat for like 10 years. And then I never, I never hit any of them. Not that that's wrong. Again, like anything that I'm going to say right now, like I, what I'm trying to emphasize by saying this is that it's evolved. Almost every year it's changed. And next year my approach is going to be different. Um, I found, you mentioned to-do lists. Um, and not, not to mince words, but I found eliminating to-do lists helped me, again, it's, it's a play on words, but eliminating to-do lists and instead uh, having priority lists. Just, it really just, when you sat there, you're, you're still doing a list, but like if you sat there and like looked at your list and be like, would this be on my priority list? Or is it a to-do list, right? Helped a lot. So like, that helped. Um, what the structure I use now is one that I've adopted heavily from a book called Traction. Um, and it's the Entrepreneur's Operating System. Uh, I don't implement all of it. I steal a little bit from Scrum in my business. I steal a little bit from EO. And I, I think that's important. I don't think you should get something and like force the entire thing into your business. But what this one has helped me the most, and, and it stayed. Um, I was doing this one last year, too. But what it is is. There's a book called, um, besides the book Traction, which I highly recommend, there's another one called Rocket Fuel by the same author, which I cannot emphasize enough to kind of figure out if you're a visionary or an integrator or neither. 
because um, that's going to make a lot of sense into how to actually scale your business and rather than just have a hobby. But I recommend those. And there's a third one called BHAG. And this one was probably the most impactful for me, period, beyond, beyond traction, beyond all of them. As a business operating manual, BHAG is the, by far the best. And BHAG stands for, I'm sorry, the book's called 3HAG, the number three HAG. But they talk about BHAGs inside of it. And what a 3HAG is, is a three-year highly audacious goal, right? I don't do well with five-year, 10-year, and 15-year goals in my business, right? Um, I can talk about them like what I would love to be at in X amount of time, but they're, for some reason for me, they're much harder to like identify with and build out a plan for. Three years for me seems like to be a pretty sweet spot. And what, so you have this big, hairy, audacious goal, which is the BHAG, big, hairy, audacious goal. And then a three HAG is your three-year, highly audacious goal. And once you have that three-year goal in your business, and we could like play around with what some could be in each other's businesses, right? Um, like all the end caps at Lowe's, right, Ricky? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like, once you have that, again, I would fail. Like I would fail all my goals when I did that. Like I wouldn't hit them because they're, you have a three-year goal, but you really don't know how to like, how to get there. So now is when I go into like the traction book and what that comes into is something they call rocks. You can call them whatever you want. I used to call them micro steps, right? But apparently like the professional term here is rocks. And that is if I want to be here in three years, I need to be here on year two and a half and here on year two and just keep walking it back, right? And then once you, I like to do that at first by every six months, like this is like more or less, I don't want to wait until the month before to then be like, oh my God, we're not going to hit it. Or like, let's try to cram a year and a half worth of work in one month. I, I do them by every six months like that. And then I build up the micro steps to hit them. So on target to hit my three year goal at six months means I need to be here. What are the things I need to do to be on target, to have a chance of hitting that six month goal, right? And then I spell them out. I did that and that helps so freaking much, but this next thing is what really just literally put like, I don't know, kerosene, I don't know, what's the most flammable thing in the world? But like it just like lit, the ship, lit, lit it on fire. And that is, I looked at the, those micros, those rocks that allow me to hit and say, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, and I put them on the calendar. I cannot emphasize this enough because when I did that, right? Something that Tom and I have talked about all the time, we heard on a podcast, I don't remember which one, and that is, if you do more than one thing, which Ting, I think you're just like me in this regard, <laughs> like one thing is just not in your DNA, right? So it's like, if you're gonna do more than one thing, what happens is, like say you have 10 things, I'm gonna use big even numbers, so like you do 10 things, you're like, I'm gonna divide my time amongst these 10 things and I'm gonna grow all these 10 things, it is a lie. You are going to put almost all of your time on the one thing of those 10 that is doing the worst because it's requiring your attention to get on track. And the other things, every single one of them doing better than that one is going to suffer. So you're like, it's like self-sabotage, right? It is self-sabotage. You're going to spend all these resources, that you, limited resources, towards the one thing that's not working. And the, and the nine that actually maybe not are working great, but that are working better are going to suffer. It's, it's a trap that I still struggle with, by the way. There is no like solution to this, like th that I know of. It's maybe a heavy question, why is that? I don't know. Let, I, re I relate to that. Let, yeah, I know, I know that like, <clears throat> why is that? Because I think it's like a inability to recognize something as a total loss and cut it. I, I, to a, to a, and it's probably even deeper than that, but like you believe this thing's gonna work. It is normal for you to have a bunch of wheels going and you're like, at times it's normal. Not everything is up, up, up and away. I'm really good at fixing things. So you go in to fix this thing, but sometimes the, the problems get a little more complicated and it requires something you've not dealt with before. So let me go learn this, or let me go try to hire for this. Let me go try to get money for this. Let me go, you're doing all this stuff, but the time is moving on. The wheel of time is moving on these other nine. And next thing you know, it's June. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're like, okay, this is fixed, finally. Let's go look at this other thing. And then one of the other ones does. And then you go, but that's, that's what happens. You, you can, that you have a limited amount of time and you put it towards the one that is giving you the most problems so that you can fix it. When something's on cruise control and not giving you an ulcer, you don't deal with it. You don't put any time towards it. It's fine, <laughs> you know? 
You don't go to 2.0. You don't. Every, we, we talk a lot about, yeah, we're gonna, the product's doing good. Most people have a PO that's doing good, they just leave it alone. Let, let's just like keep fanning some PPC in there and, and let it go. They're not thinking of 2.0, and then they're like wrecked. Sales are going down, product life cycle is coming to an end, competitors are coming with a better product, and it's like, what happened? What happened is you were putting your time towards something <laughs> that was not your number one thing. And, and it, I, I'm saying this not like accusing you guys of this, but this is something I deal with it's something you should be aware of. So what happened was, when I tied my rocks into my calendar, what happened, and create a separate calendar for this, like don't wreck, I live off my calendar, so like don't wreck your calendar because it's gonna look ugly, right? You wanna like a, a workbook here. When you look at this and it's like, I wanna do X. To do X, it's gonna require me to do this, this, and this. When am I gonna do that, right? It's not gonna be in your gym time that you have on your calendar. It's not going to be in your golf time. I'm picking on you, but like I don't know if you golf, but it's not going to be in golf. It's not going to be in your training time for running. It's not going to be in. It's not going to be in paintball time. It's not going to be in like these times you have locked out. So it's going to be. It's, it's got to come from somewhere though, and it's not going to be when you're sleeping. How long is that going to take per day or per week for you to do to realistically hit your six-month goal, right? Um, put it in there and just pop in each one of them. What I find out in almost every single instance is that I need more time than there is in the day, right? And that I also want to force this so bad that tasks that I should put an hour for, I'm like, I'm just gonna put 15 minutes towards this, like every day before I head out. I'm just gonna like blast, <laughs> I'm just gonna do this like blast off routine. And, and I was like, okay, I, I checked that box, I set it in motion, that's my, that's my five minutes towards that. You know, and I'm just gonna be like this puppet master up here. That doesn't work. So tying it to the calendar was critical for me in that. I recommend you do the exercise. Don't think this is like a five, 10 minute exercise either, by the way. This is like, this is like gut wrenching. <laughs> it's a day or more, but like pop it in the calendar. And remember, there needs to be space in there for your personal stuff. And if you're married and have kids, like that has to go in there too. So it, it, get, it gets kind of, and then your sleep, just pop everything into the calendar and tie it into your other thing. Um, one more thing, and then we'll open it back up, and I got a whole bunch more stuff to add, is one, one of the other things I did last year that I've completely changed, and it's been huge, is we used to have three-month check-ins. So if you're, doing, if, you, if you're working by yourself, it's a check-in with yourself. That's exactly what it is. It's looking at your goals and going in, and, like, and that's the hardest one, by the way. If you think working with a team and paying them is harder, no, it's harder doing it yourself. You know, if you're doing this yourself, I recommend doing a decision journal. Um, I didn't realize until later, but a decision journal is like if you have a journal, but a decision journal is, it's like if you're just starting as a seller, it's very easy. Like how many, how many orders did you get? Did you ship those orders? So like the quality control is very clear. Like if you don't ship out that amount of orders, you get suspended. <laughs> so like you're doing your job is very obvious, right? And if you hire someone, they need to do that. And if they don't, they get fired. But when you become the boss, that's what you are, you run the company and you run all these other things, your decisions is your product. The decisions you make in your business, that is your product. Who holds you accountable for your decisions? Like, and we make bad decisions. So understanding like your strengths when it comes to decision making, I feel is tracked really good in a decision journal. And the decision journal is gonna be something simple like, I think you should do electronic as much as I like analog, like tablet and stuff, like, like, like I think Tom and I are the same in that, I like writing it down. The problem is like, your time that you have to sit down and do this might be at a doctor's office, right? Not, like you wanna be able to access this cloud-based thing as much as possible, like use technology here. Things I like to add on there is, what is the decision? What is the desired outcome that I am hoping by the decision? Because a lot of people will make a decision and they're like, well, we're not out of business, so that was a good decision. No, what was the decision you were trying to reach <laughs> by making that? I put in what was my emotional state at the time? And what things I add in here is, was, there, was this driven by cash flow concerns? Insert fears here too, but if it works for you. But like, it, what was my cat, like what was my like emotional state or motivation? Was it coming from a place of like abundance? Was it like, be honest with yourself and like put that in. And then I put in what time of the day it was. I just dropped out the time down uh, that it was and the date. Now I go back and I revisit this every six week period, right? Um, and this is where I think if you're doing this with your team, you should do this every six weeks, but if you're doing this yourself, 
the other person in that meeting is your decision journal. And you're, you're looking at the journal and be like, wow, I got this track record of what? Well, every single time that I've made a decision that was to solve a cash flow issue, it was bad. <laughs> well, you know who you need to hire? <laughs> You need to hire someone who's really strong at that thing because you kind of suck at it. And if you're really bad at making financial decisions in your business, that your business is going to go down. Or you're going to be on this hamster wheel of like treading water forever, right? But so, you, so if you're by yourself, use a decision journal in there. Or if you're doing it with a team, you might do multiple meetings in the different areas of your business. And you have this six week thing. I moved it to six weeks because three months just was not enough. I want to know at six, what I was finding is when I had three month check-ins, a lot, we were missing our six month goals because things were being missed or we were falling behind or industry changes happened and we weren't adapting quick enough to them. Like, a, like, like for example, like say there was a goal you wanted to hit money wise and Amazon just rolled out these changes. Imagine if you had your meeting in January, in December, your next one's not going to be until March. Well, these changes are in effect now and you haven't done anything about it. So six weeks gave us more, if, if at six weeks something happened, we still had time to change before the three month time hit and we could still have a, 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 an excellent chance of hitting our six month goal. So like, I got a lot more to add, but I just want to open it up. Does that make any sense to anybody? Does anyone see themselves using that? Do you do anything similar that maybe you didn't feel comfortable saying before? Uh, since I got all vulnerable, put my stuff out there. What do you guys want to add? Like, what would you do differently? Any questions about that? Really? I think one thing I want to add, on top of goals, one thing that I did, that did this year that really helped was adding deadlines. For me personally. Um, so like what Tom was saying, you have a big goal. Let's say with monetary, you want to hit a million dollars in your account. And then obviously, you know, that's like a very broad goal. Break it down into you can call them little goals or tasks, but for me personally, because I'm a procrastinator, <coughs> putting a deadline next to each one of those tasks and actually meeting that deadline. And I actually use a software, it's called monday.com. It's helped me a lot. And it actually has that feature where you can uh, prioritize things. And let me see how you can prioritize it real quick. So you can prioritize them between like low, medium, or high. Or you can put like custom labels, or whatever you want to put. And then, so I do that too, which helps a lot. <laughs> Because I'm also one of those people that like I'll have five tasks in a week, and if I don't prioritize them, I'll probably go for the easy one, and that's like the one that will uh, provide like the least amount of returns. Um, so, but due dates for myself, and it just helps hold me accountable. I just see the due date there, and it's like all right, and, but, and I put a realistic one too. We have like a like me, with my company, we have like weekly tasks that we want to tackle for the week. And if our, our meeting is on Monday, I'm not gonna put the due date for something important, something that's gonna be complicated on Tuesday. I'll put it for Thursday. So it'll give me from Monday to Thursday to complete it, but I know that by Thursday I have, I have to get it done. Yeah, I, 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 before I, I was doing that, I would catch myself like going on the next Monday meeting and I'll see a task and it's like, oh shit, I didn't do it, you know? And then I would feel bad. I'd be like, oh man, like, I, gotta, I gotta do this, you know? But putting that, that date there, just, I don't know why, it just, it's like, oh shit, okay, it's due tomorrow. Or it's due in three days. I have three days to like space this out, kind of like how you said, because we all have things to do in our lives. I have three days to find times in my day to get this done, but I know it needs to get done by Thursday. And I, I know it sounds stupid. And no, it's, it's not stupid. I, we, 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 brought, we brought Monday, and I, I scoffed at Monday forever, but we needed to bring it in for some project management stuff. Monday's great. Yeah, I used uh, it to account be accountable myself, but you know, once you have, you know, probably a really big company and employees and stuff like that i mean it, it helps hold them accountable as yeah well. no deadlines that's that's yeah. yeah that's super important yeah and it's cool because monday it's like every time you do a task you put like done and it like yeah confetti really cool confetti thing, yeah and it puts it to the end and then if you know on monday you can put like um like a, a big big goal in the bottom and then you have your tasks and then let's say there's 10 tasks and you complete one on the the, the final goal it'll be like a circle and then each task that you complete, it'll add like a, it'll be, it's like a pie chart. It'll add a, a little section percentage. that closes. So it's like you can see yourself completing that huge goal that maybe didn't seem attainable, but as you uh, kill those tasks, it fills up. And then at the end, finally, you fill the, the pie chart, it's all green and, and you know, you pat yourself on the back, so. 
Yeah. yeah. Anybody else want to add anything to that? <clears throat> I like it. Deadlines. <clears throat> Give them the cube. Or put it that way if you can. Well, one of my favorite books is The 5 a.m. Club. So bottom line is wake up early. Have some time to yourself. Meditate a little bit about whatever that means. To just think about what your day is going to be like. And I think that puts things into perspective. I also think setting up the day that you have the night before is critical. So I typically will write down five things. If I can get all those five things accomplished the next day, whew, it's a good day. So setting up your day the night before, and we're getting granular here in terms of what you do on a daily basis, but I think that really helps. Just and, and get up a little bit earlier, start taking time for yourself. Otherwise your day gets off and you get in that rat race super fast. So, you know. Yeah, I, 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 I avoid that one, but I, I could not agree with you more. Like, I'm, I'm very extreme, like, much earlier than five, like, 3 a.m. is me, but, like, that sleep is important, too. But, and I know some people are night owls. I, I think I, I don't know how to see night owls' point of view. Um, again, if it works, it works, but, I mean, there's just, like, every bit of science out. If you're working the entire time and you have a job that's paying the bills and the only time you have left is that, I, that's my only, that, like, I get it. But... Get up early, like every bit of science out there right now, just like, I mean, from, from, from the early morning sun to like the accomplishment you feel before mo your competitors are, are getting up to like everything points to that. And the 5 a.m. club is a, I've not read the book, but I've read books like that. Um, I, I didn't read it. It's gonna sound like ego-ish and maybe it is. I was like, I get up at three. What am I gonna read 5 a.m. club for? And I know it's more than just about getting up at five, but I read a book called, um, we both read this book too. Uh, it's probably the most popular. If some, can I look up a book about, somebody just Google, um, popular book about getting up early in the morning. And, and it's just one person that had, we've read it, a person had like this horrible accident that forced them to start getting up early. It's like the, the best one out there for that. And I just assumed it would be redundant. But I've heard 5 a.m. Club is fantastic. The Miracle Morning. Miracle Morning. It's the top one out there if you Google it. I recommend that. And I've heard just phenomenal things about 5 a.m. You think I should still read it? 100%. Okay. Um, but yes, I, I, I cannot emphasize that enough. I know night owls are going to hate me for this. I know how radical of a change that is. I don't suggest you go home to, tonight and get up at 5 a.m. tomorrow. You will regret it. There is no easy way to start doing it, but you can make it gradual. Um, sometimes life has some stuff in the case, in, involved. Like a couple years ago, if I was a stay-at-home parent, I was, if I was a single parent and I had my kids, like I'd have to be a little more flexible and accommodating to other things. But yeah, I, I, I think getting up early is, that's the one thing that almost everyone has in common in some of these chats that I'm in that have like some super success. They all got up early. There's not a single night owl there. So I think that's, I think that's great. You said another point before that though that I, I also before, agree. The night before? The night before planning, I think, I, I didn't mention that. I think that's, I think that's pretty critical. I wake up with a much higher stress level if I haven't done, because sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just drop the ball and life gets in the way. I have a totally different day and vibe and attitude that morning if I hadn't set it up the night before. Um, and also sometimes it's like you get so caught up into it, you don't set it up the night before and then you feel like I don't have to, cause, because you didn't set up the night before, you're behind. So you don't take the time to set up that day. And then I find those days end the most stressful because I never stop working. Whereas if I wanted to tackle something else, I find myself re re reverting or resorting to a to-do list instead of a priority list those days. Have you ever read the book uh, Tools of the Titans by Tim Ferriss? I mean, it's a giant book, but if you, it's little snippets about just really successful people. And the common thread in all those people is they get up early. Yeah. They have a little time for themselves to do whatever it is that you want. Maybe yeah. it's working out, maybe it's meditation, maybe it's learning something, getting on with AI, whatever that is that you know trips your trigger. They, they all have that same thing. So when you start reading that and you're like, well, geez, no wonder these guys are successful. Maybe I should do something like them. That's why you know, some of those traits that they have, there's a reason why they're successful. They get up early, they plan the night before, they do some of the stuff where I didn't, I didn't even met this. Yeah, th those are really critical. Um, anyone want to add anything before I add like another one that now is just 100% has to be involved in my uh, goal setting? You want to add? No, I don't want to add to a question for Carlos. Pass the cube, please, if you can. Robin Swarma. Thank you. The 5 a.m. is really, um, it's awesome. 
you can get up early and do stuff. But whenever you're sourcing from China, it's 12 hour, 13 hour different. How would you manage the sleep like that? Because when I was doing sourcing, mm -hmm. many, um, like last, a few months ago, I barely go to bed like two or three. And I have a child to watch, and I have to get up five, maybe seven, five hours sleep is not enough for me. So how? Okay, so, so let me, that, that's, that's a phenomenal point. Let, let me emphasize this. Being there for your child and your family trumps everything that we're talking about, okay? Trumps everything that we're talking about. Assuming that box is checked, or in my limited experience with kids, it, it gets better as far as they're sleeping, right? When you can, you get back into that schedule. Now, the other part of that, and, and you know what, sometimes like, like my wife has, you know, some, some projects she's working on and like uh, goals that she has, and in our arrangement, not just because she's my wife, I gotta throw that out there now in the video before I get like crucified for this, but like she, in our kind of like division of labor within our family and like what she does, she handles more of like the baby and the babies, the, the kids want her. Um, and I'm, I'm working. She's not able to hit her goals on certain days because the kids got sick. And she's still watching the kids, so like some things take a back seat. You gotta make the schedule work. Kids, your family first. Um, the other part about communicating with China, my early morning wake up routine really originated from that with China. So I didn't always have this like 5 a.m. workout routine, but with my wife when I met her, um, which are now going on, I think we've been together for like 11 years um, of my 15 years as a seller. So she had this like one thing that was like, really, she's amazing. She has this like one thing and she wants to go to bed together at the same time. That's like a big deal for her. So I would either not give that and stay up late dealing with China, um, or I could get up super early and I could catch the back end of their shift. Um, and I communicated that with them. I was like, hey, look, I'm gonna be online at this time, but it still allows me to kind of be on the schedule with the family and, and go to bed and all that stuff there. Um, that, that worked for me. Uh, it's got, you gotta do what works for you. I can say that if you can make the early morning schedule work, it does seem to be something that is in common with nearly everyone I know that is super successful. Thank you. Yeah. So one of, the, one of the other ones that I tie into what I described now, and this is something that may seem obvious to some of you, but it was not something I did before. And if you're work, this is especially if you're working with a team. And by team, I mean someone in addition to you, right? Business partner, uh, spouse who doesn't have an official role in the company but actually does, um, VAs, domestic employees, whatever the case may be. So a team. Um, this is a big one, <laughs> is we didn't assign dependencies. So uh, what you were mentioning before about monday.com and really tracking certain things that are project-based and getting an idea as to like where we are and hitting our goals uh, for our six-week meeting, which is building towards our six-month milestone goal, is dependencies. So let's say that you have a goal of we want in three years we want to be the top person, like we'll use Salsa Kings as an example. In three years, we already are this, but like say in three years, we want, want to be, we want to be the number one result organically anytime somebody searches for learn to dance salsa. Or you want to be the number one result that comes up for any, you, you, are you open if we say your brand here? Or you don't? Sure. Okay. So like um, Natalie's Creations. Creations by Natalie. Creations by Natalie. Um, we want to be the number one store that comes up anytime someone is searching for building terrariums, right? So, uh, so, so like, let, let's say that was your, your goal and it was an SEO one and you were not ranked at all right now. To get there, some of your milestones might be either learn SEO, blogs, content creation, backlinks, are we hire a decision of whether we're gonna hire someone or learn this What's the, but like all those different things, right? Um, but let's say you decided that you were gonna do some of this in house. And you, one of your goals was that in six weeks you would have 10 blogs. You have a blog writer or you have someone that's gonna use AI to create them, whatever your thing is, but 
None of that can happen without a dependency, and that is somebody picking the topics. So in that case, there is one dependency. This person cannot move forward on hitting this goal without somebody else doing something. And what I found is that there's a lot of things that you want to hit that seem very easy on the surface to hit, but that have several dependencies. And sometimes the dependencies go back and forth. Approval on blank, uh, anything. So whenever we set, we have our six month goal, and we have our six weeks meeting, and we've set our rocks to hit all of them. Before we end that six week meeting, we figure out what all the dependencies are in that. Do we need a dedicated chat between these people? <coughs> Do we need to put an alert on the calendar to make sure you guys have resolved this? Because what happens sometimes in teams is someone's having a bad day or a bad week and they fell behind and so-and-so doesn't want to snitch or tattletale or whatever on the other person. And they kind of just let it fly and they kind of, but that, you're not trying to like expose anyone. You just want to hit the goal. <laughs> you're not try, no one's trying to get fired here, nothing. But this is a good way to see like, who should get a raise at the end of the year, you know? And who's like going that extra mile, that, that mortar. That's the mortar that holds everything together, I found, is the dependency. So this is a new one that we've fully implemented this year. And I, I, it's one of those things that once you do it, you can't, and it, it's like, how do people operate without email and internet <laughs> in their business, you know, 30 years ago? So like, that's what you feel like once you start putting dependencies in place. There's some software that does it, um, like Monday should have some dependencies in there. Uh, Process Street does it a lot, but there's sometimes it doesn't make sense because this is something you're going to do once. It's not a repeatable task that you need to build out this checklist for. Uh, so I, I would recommend putting uh, dependencies in place. Does that make sense for anyone? Is anyone doing something like that? Is anyone not doing it? And you're like, holy crap, like this, this would really have, fi this other thing would have happened a lot better had I done that. Or, can you think when you hear that, who's the bottleneck in your business? And it probably is you um, in this group because we're the people who run the business and that's usually who's at fault here. Um, that you're like, wow, a lot of people on my team haven't been able to do certain things and I'm frustrated with not hitting it because they're waiting on me. They're waiting on me because I'm putting my attention in an area that's taking up the biggest problems and not, is that, you're nodding your head yes. There's a few people nodding their head in the affirmative, okay. Let's see, we're ripping through this kind of fast. Okay. Um, I got a little problem. Paintball. Yeah, I won't be able to do this. I have a question. Yeah, yeah, right. Good one. Yeah, I don't see you make sense. Are there any things that, that you do um, yes. just out of, yeah, out of habit to like go back and look at your business on Amazon, like things that you go and say, okay, it's December, I want to go back and maybe revisit my listings and make sure that my listings are in competition with my my competitors. Or is there like a, an SOP that you have in place to do that? Or is that is that something you do at the beginning of the year? Is that something you're kind of ongoingly? That's a word. I would do it every six weeks. I, I I recommend doing it every six weeks, especially if it's something that's like identify the areas in your business that you're like if this part went down it would require all of our attention immediately because if it's not checked soon, it's gonna have a nasty ripple effect and like make this not worth it. So like sometimes that's a hero listing. Um, so since you're gonna do that anyway, if you have a massive catalog, maybe you don't do it for every single one, but I would definitely do it at least every six weeks for the heroes. The only time you would do it sooner, on f I mean, you could, you could do it weekly if you wanted to. I just feel like if too many changes happen, you're just like making changes for change sake. But six, six weeks, the only other way I would revisit sooner if you're like, wait a minute, our sales just got, this was a heavy drop in sales, let's see what happened. And the Tomer Ravinovich that you've heard me reference before, like he, he had me make a pretty big change. Well, yeah, he didn't have me. I heard him say it on a podcast a long time ago. We used to do this kind of in our head, is to kind of get a, this makes the six week meetings easier, is get a PowerPoint present, a PowerPoint, and get your competitors for each listing and put them to where you're looking at slide one, main images. <laughs> and you're able to clearly see, whoa, wait a minute, this is not the main image of such and such competitor. Um, we are seeing a drop in sales. 
it very well could be this. If we were to put this on PicFu, we feel like we would totally lose this now, or let's run it on PicFu and see if this could be it. And, and then you'd make the change sooner. So some of it's reactive sooner than six weeks. The other one would be every six weeks. Some of these, by the way, guys, depending on how big your team is, you have someone who runs these meetings for you. Like I know that's maybe beyond the reach of some people, but like there is so many different areas in the business and sometimes you have somebody run these meetings and it doesn't have to be you. But, but yeah, otherwise, have six week meetings. Anybody else? Fernando, wanna drop some wisdom on us? Nope. Okay. We're talking, we're, we're gonna come back to, to business um, goal setting, but uh, I, we're, gonna go, we're gonna talk more about business goal setting, but we're also gonna talk about resetting goals. Like, there is a point where you set a goal, you were introduced to new information, and you should pivot or change these goals. Um, when do you completely change the goal? When do you abandon an idea? <laughs> and you know, we're gonna talk about that in a second, but I really feel like a lot of people's business goals fail because of the personal side. Like, uh, so t touching a bit, go around on like personal goals. Um, I neglected mine for a long time. And I'm gonna, like when I started e-commerce, I was a runner. <laughs> I was a skinny runner. I'm not skinny, and I'm just starting to run now. I will tell you that not taking care of health, and I know I'm not the poster child for this, and I don't want to get like too woo-woo on anybody, but like not doing anything health-wise, like if you neglect the health side of things, it has an almost immediate impact on your business. Like two, two, two things that are like, if you're neglecting health or you're with the wrong partner, which I know is even more woo-woo for this type of group, but if you're in the wrong part life partner or you um, are neglecting health, it is going to have a massive negative impact almost immediately um, on your business. So neglecting that area is, uh, it really doesn't matter if you get the best of what everybody has said here and put it together, it's, it's gonna come down. So anybody wanna share some personal goals that, that they have for, for next year? Andres, thank you. Yeah. No, I, have, I, I haven't said any, well actually no, no that's not true. Um, personal, personal was, was find a partner. I wanna start dating my wife. Mm. That's when you started dating your wife? No, 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 that's my goal for 2024. Oh, you have a goal to start dating who will be your wife? Right. Okay. That's I really want to hear the rocks on that. Mm -hmm. I, well, I got to figure that out. I got to figure that out. <laughs> that sounds like a fun year, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to be sure, so I'm assuming there's like some sampling going on and like. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I want to, I want to Pass the cube, bro, if you can. E-commerce, uh, uh, you know I'm pretty new. I just subscribed for the, uh, do you think you promotion, promotion of you the year, the academy? of the year that you have for the Christmas, yep. whatever. Uh, but I think I have one thing, I have a friend partner that asked me to create, create a product. So that's why I'm into the PL, I guess it's the product label, right? Um, but the product is kind of always thinking of massive goal stuff. Uh, so we are in between licensing it to a big brand, like, I don't know, it's for dogs, for the pets, or launching on PL, you know, Amazon, Amazon Chewy, Chewy, it's for pets, or Walmart. So I'm between, we are between those two parts, or private label, or licensing. Uh, other part might be product label for a year or for a few months to two years perhaps, see, see the money, see how it's involved, learn a lot about that. And then if the money is good or we, are, we, get, we get lazy or unfocused, licensing the, the, the product, right? Yeah. Can so, I? so that's my goal, but that's my personal goal and my friend partner goal on that f for this year, 24. So that's the profession, that's the business goal for both of you? Yeah. Okay. So. That's great that you have a goal, right? 
I, I had to look this up while we were going, but because I wanted to get the acronym specifically, I just say it all the time, and I read about it, and I, 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 that's how I evaluate the goals that are there. So the, there's something called SMART goals, mm -hmm. right? SMART meaning specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound, right? So if those goals work for you, do it. But a lot of what you said was maybe if year or two, there was a lot of like yeah, flexibility yeah. in there. Yes, yeah. e even, I'll even pick on like, you mentioned you signed up for the Academy, Wizards of Become Academy. I think that's a great move and, and, and mm -hmm. you're supporting the group, that's amazing. But what is your goal out of the Academy? Like, how are you going to about personal, personal goal. Your, your, your goal, like you signed up for the Academy, uh -huh. was it to support the group? If so, check that box. If it's because you want to learn how to do blank, <clears throat> and you realize I can't be here every Saturday because I'm gonna be doing blank and I need to be able to hear certain topics that are gonna to be said, so I wanna be able to revisit them and grow in X. Um, you mentioned that there's a private label opportunity. You guys already have the product and the brand. We are, no, we are at the, in, in the final prototype, let's say. Right, so like you're in the final stages of getting a private label product. I think licensing is a good move to do. However, mm -hmm. licensing, in, from my limited knowledge with it, is not something you do when you start the product. There needs to be growth and established mm -hmm. sales. That's why we're thinking about one year or two years on sales and then licensing. Right. But, but there's another guy that talk, we spoke uh, a few weeks ago that even without selling, without sales, we can present a product and try to get some licensing deals with a big, big name, you know, if they like the product, yeah. of course. So, so I would say get that mm -hmm. and then let's, let's back that out. So you're saying in three years you want to have a product that is selling how much per year? I don't know, it's, it's your goal. It's, okay. This is gonna be a three year, uh -huh. highly achievable goal. What would your sales be in three years for that first product? First year, 100K. 100K per month, 100K first year, per year. First year, first year. First year, 100K in yeah, sales. Yeah. Second year? Double that. Huh? Double that, perhaps. 200K. Yeah. Third year? Double that. 400K 400, yeah, uh -huh. per year. Okay, if, if that's your goal. Now, what you do when you set that is you now come in and say, okay, what is my profit margin on that gonna be? This is what I would do, just because you wanna make sure this is, a, this is gonna be a goal for you. So it's like, what's the profit margin gonna be on this? At, at 400K in sales, how much do I wanna be making in profit? At 400K in sales, you can still be in the 20, 25% range, mm -hmm. um, but. The product is supposed to cost let's say 20% uh, of the sales. So 20% so of the 400K. No, 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 the cost of the product, let's say is 25 cents, and uh, we sell for a dollar, let's say that. Or it's 20, uh, $25 if we sell for a hundred. It's kind so of your cost right. is 25%, so you have yeah. a 75% profit margin. That's without no, ads, that's range. That's without ads range. or anything, that's fine. Let's just say it's no, 50%. We, we, have to add, we have to add to that sales and... Um, yeah, but let, let, I mean, this is just an exercise. This is yeah, a, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not trying to say whether the idea is good or not. Like of that's course, that's of for course, you to decide. Of course. But like, say you have a 50% profit margin, and this is how you go about the goal, and you're like, well, so in, 40, in three years, we're gonna have $400,000 in sales, and we're gonna make $200,000 in profit. It's gonna be 100,000 for each of us, assuming we take all the profit out of the business and pay ourselves. Mm -hmm. In three years, is that, are you like, just over the moon excited about that $100,000 that you're gonna pay yourself? Or do you think it's too high or do you think it's too low? No, it's a, it's a well, it starts like a side job or a side venture okay. on, on the okay. side, right? I'm not, I'm, uh -huh. I'm not judging. I, I just no, wanna no, know, no, like, no, you, no, you, no, if you great. decide that that's a yes, then you're like, okay, fantastic. Uh -huh. This is either gonna be private label or it's gonna be like a private label licensing. When am I gonna decide which direction we're gonna go on this? Um, and then just start plugging those things in. So in three years, we're gonna be here, uh, two and a half years, two years, one and a half years, one, six months, and then start plugging every, when, when, where in there are you deciding like we're going to licensing? And since maybe you don't know about licensing, who are we gonna learn licensing from? Are we gonna to go to the licensing shows that seem to be in Vegas or one that we went to? If so, when are you gonna to go to those? Because if you're gonna make the decision at one year, you're not gonna to go to it one year. Of course. You're gonna to need to go in six months you know what I mean? So like you map this out and then see if it fits your personals and you put them together and see if it fits. See if you can be more aggressive. See if you were too aggressive. Does that make sense?
that make sense for everyone? Like that's how you. Yeah. yeah. I, get out. I, I think one of the biggest things with goal setting, first of all, is not writing it down, and not budgeting enough of your time to hit those goals. Like you set all these goals, and you say, oh, "What is it? Parkinson's Parkinson's law? That you you the time it takes to complete a task." is dependent on how much time you assign to it. The Parkinson's law? Parkinson's <laughs> law. So if you have a year to hit this goal, it's probably going to take you 11 months and something to do it. But if you needed to hit the goal next week, you would finish it next week. So like the amount of time it takes to complete a task is usually dependent on the amount of time you assign to it. So it becomes very tricky when you start creating goals and, and assigning times to them because we wait. There's a book called 12 Week Year um, that we came close to like trying to adopt across the board, except it was like total mutiny in the company because uh, it required you to make some changes that I couldn't. But if you're just starting a company, maybe you started it. But 12 Week Year. 12 Week Year. Yeah, they pretty much broke down. Great book to read. But it pretty much broke down a bunch of studies showing how if you structured the business a certain way and had certain like scorecards and whatever, you could accomplish a year's worth of work in 12 weeks. And if you did that, every day was a week and every week was a year. Something like, like no, no. Every day was a week and every week was a month for 12 a year. And you then grabbed your stuff and built it backwards in there. It was, it, it was exciting. Unfortunately, though, like, I found that people that work for you don't have the same crazy vision that you do and work ethic that you do, and that's fair. Um, 12 week year, it's great. If, if you're running the business by yourself, it's a cool exercise if you're doing a, because uh, like I think a lot of us here talk about our businesses, especially me, and it's very like, go, 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 very hustle, very grow, grow, grow. But a lot of people want a lifestyle business, and, and e-commerce allows for just a lifestyle business. Like maybe your thing is, I want to travel a lot. Like, that's the only reason I'm doing this. Like, I really could give two you-know-whats about selling online. Like, I just want to go, I, I want to go to every professional baseball and football stadium there is in the world. Like, that's what I want to do. And that's why I sell online. If that's your thing, and you don't have a massive team, you would probably be able to just do 12-week year. Because you'd be able to get your stuff and say, like, I'm going to grind. And like, my stuff that normally costs this, I'm going to do it in this time. My, I'm going to do my week tasks in a day and my days. In a, and then you're going to be able to have so much extra time on your hands um, to have more of a lifestyle business. If you're not going for a lifestyle business, and it's not saying hustle mentality is good, but you, you are cursed with that like hustle mentality like myself and I think a lot of, a lot of you here. The only thing 12-week year means to you is, wow, now we can do four years in one year. <laughs> and you're just going to plug those extra years in and celebrate the growth. So neither one is wrong. but I feel like I found the 12-week year hard for someone like me, um, but I think it would be phenomenal for someone that has a, more of a lifestyle business that they're going for. All right. Um, that's a lot. Oh, um, pivoting on goals. Anything else on that on the personal side? No. This is, this is actually one of the first years that I hit, so I, I could just show you like from the failure side. I've, I've, this is the first year I've actually hit uh, some of my personal goals um, by setting uh, dependencies on them, going into six weeks and breaking it down. But this is the first year that I've ever hit all of my personal goals. Um, and, it feel, and it feels great. Um, and I want everybody to have that feeling for the personal and professional side. Now, there are a lot of times that the goal we set uh, even if it's a smart goal, needs to be tweaked. Anyone done that? How about this one? And, and this is, I'm not bashing Amazon on this. When I started selling on Amazon, it was because Amazon was the easiest place to make a lot of money. Right? It's not anymore. Right? <laughs> it's not. Like, everything from getting an account open, there's now verification. There's now compliance acts, all, all the way to the highest growth potential, which is private label. It's, it's very resource intensive. There's a lot of risk and all that stuff there. So if that trend was to continue, and say we were having this conversation again in 10 years, 
I'm hoping I'm not still just doing that in 10 years, but like at what point do you say, at what point is it not pivoting into a different strategy within Amazon and the pivot needs to be pivoting out and instead saying, let's just go Shopify um, before this gets too bad and then we're like cannibalizing ourselves if we try to do it. You know, when is it print on demand? When is it like any of these other things? Um, anybody had to do that in their business? Like maybe you were doing private label and you went too fast from wholesale to private label and you were like, man, this is a mistake. I need to go back. Nobody? So everyone here is hitting their goals? You? Do you want to share what that was and what was like the thought process behind it? Um, yeah, I was no? doing, uh, I was doing financial advising in the studio and then I launched the Unleash. That was this year. <coughs> yeah. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a really hard one to do. Yeah. Um, I, I find that having the six week meetings instead of the three month meetings, the quarterly meetings, helps a great deal with that. Um, if you go with the three months meeting, you blew a quarter before making any changes. Um, and with the six week, you can at least make a pivot and still get progress in that same quarter. Uh, that's been a pretty big one for me. Anybody else want to share any like massive changes in the, in the different direction that you need to make and no, nobody? All right. That was everything that I had. Excuse me. Do you have any, I, 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 I didn't check out on your uh, team Telegram or whatever. Uh, any advice, help on the patenting or stuff? Patenting? Yeah. I recommend somebody named Rich Goldstein. Expensive? Well, yeah, if you're talking about patents, you're talking about yeah, expensive. I'm yeah. looking for something. No, no, no. Uh, no. I went to, I went Cheap to the, patents are even more expensive. I went to the FIU. They, say, they sent me to FIU for some helping for entrepreneur, new newbies, all the stuff. And they said, they, no, nah, we're on vacation until next year. No. Nah. There's design patents and utility patents. Utility yeah. patents seem to be more expensive than design patents. But... Any, any, anyone in the, in the team, in the group? Who we, we, have a few, we have a few sessions that we're talking about patent attorneys, but, but um, I would go into the vault and look for Rich Goldstein or just search for patent. Mm -hmm. Or if you reach out to me, I could do an intro with Rich Goldstein. I find him, I've not used him personally. I've recommended several people to him, especially for like the research phase of it. But the cost is gonna depend on like, how many, a lot of the times you have a product that's patented, it has multiple patents. Yeah. Um, so th there's a lot of, I, I think on the low end, you're looking at like 5K. I've heard 3,500, but on the low end, you're looking at about 5K okay. to get the patent. Um, what the fuck? I'll get it. Um, that's Merlin. Let's see, let me send this back home. Um, <laughs> It's worth it. I, I know design patents are good. I find design patents get shot down kind of regularly on Amazon. I mean, there's, it seems to be like such an easy change that you can make um, to the product. Oh, I'm going to send this thing home right now. Yeah, but, but for licensing, they, they re is it required to have the patent? And you don't have to have a patent for licensing. For licensing? No. Not at all. For licensing? Yeah, for licensing, you do not need a patent. Wow. Yeah, you just have to have a product. My limited experience, we went with uh, Paul mm -hmm. on a group trip to a licensing show in Vegas last year. Last year, two years ago. And it seems like they want to see about a million dollars in sales. They could also make an exception if they wanted and just give it to you, but that seemed to be more or less. They wanted to see a product that had established sales velocity. And what seemed like the more important thing was is that they wanted to see that you were in a category that they weren't already doing a lot of licensing in. So like, I guess an example would be if you were doing, if you wanted to get Hello Kitty and you wanted to put it on a backpack, there's already a bazillion people that have that on backpacks, but if you wanted to do Hello Kitty on a sneaker, or a watch or something like that and they didn't have a lot of people doing it, then it would be much easier and more affordable for you to get in. But they wanted to see the product had established velocity and there seemed to be a lot of steps involved with the product. Like, Sales. It seemed very dependent on, yeah, because they're, they're gonna make money, they're gonna make the majority of their money off of royalties on your sales. 
So if you come to them for a product and you want to do licensing on it, and it doesn't have a proven track record of sales, there's no, like, how are they going to make their money? Um, so they want to make money on the IP. So yeah, they want to see sales. And it seems like a, every category is different, but it seemed like a million dollars was the thing. If you're doing a million dollars in sales, I think, I, I think going to the show is worth it if you have a product where it makes sense. Like if you're doing a million dollars in shower curtains, right? It was someone in the group was talking about shower curtains before. Instead of, huh? It's probably, can somebody plug it back in? Just real quick until they can go home because I'm sending it. Um, yeah, so if you're doing a million dollars, say you're doing a million dollars here in shower curtains, and I'm going to say this because the person's no longer in the group and they, they, they've said they're not going to do it, but like, and you went and wanted to put a Game of Thrones shower curtain, um, I think that's solid. Like, I think you probably have some good stuff. Uh, you have a kid's bathroom, there's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and you want to get them on your shower curtain. So just make sure there's something there. Make sure that the product that you, it seems like the product you have needs to also be a good fit for it. Uh, but then again, I would have never thought Disney would be okay with the Stormtrooper IP on a glow in the dark stick decal for a toilet seat, which is what I have at my house for my bathroom. Um, but they are. But it seemed, it seemed like the vibe I got was like, they don't want, think about it, you wouldn't want your IP associated with an adult novelty product. Like that's the extreme, right? No one wants Hello, hopefully no one wants Hello Kitty on a 10 speed, you know what I mean? But no, I, I would think Star Wars, no one wants their product associated with a toilet unless it's like a toilet product or a toilet cleaning product. But um, the other one is if you, energy drinks, the C4 energy drink one, um, I drink them a lot on the trips to Tampa, but they, and I, I forget who pointed this out, but like I would grab the C4 energy drink and I would always grab the one that was like Starburst or Skittles um, because I associate the flavor. And this was like before the licensing show and somebody pointed it out and I was like, oh my God, that's licensing. That was me. That was you? Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, oh my God, that's licensing. Um, and you know what? Neither one of those drinks tasted like Starburst or Skittles. But they, they tasted just like, I, I have not been able to taste the difference in any of those flavors, but I bought the one that was that. Um, and if you go back and you look in the gas station, next time you go through, go to the energy drinks and look at them, they seem to be, at least the ones I've gone to, are priced slightly more than the other ones. And that's just to take into account the royalties that they're paying to have that on there. Um, I'm willing to bet that those are their best sellers too. What, what? I'm willing to bet that those are their best sellers. Oh. So if you have soap and you want to get, you know, Star Wars themed soap and you're doing a million dollars, yeah, I think the licensing show is good. Make sense? Yeah, it does. Any other questions anybody has? No? All right, so this is going to be the last meetup of the year um, as far as like, like this. Uh, we come back, it's either January 6th or January 13th. We're back for like a week, and then we go on the cruise on January 21st. Um, but, so we'll see each other um, at a minimum. We'll see each other a week before the cruise for that event. Um, I don't know what the topic is. We're trying to work out something to where in January and February, February and March, we're trying to get something going on where we have um, two data dive um, workshops, uh, which is another method to really go into like the keywords and um, isolating keywords that are that don't have enough uh, competition for your products. Um, there's a chance Anthony Confrancesco from Data Dive will be coming on the cruise. We're still trying to work out the details. If so, we'll have a pretty cool presentation on that. Uh, so yeah, so I don't know what the first topic is when we come back for the end of the year. We do have a meetup. Not a meetup meetup, but we do have a get together next week. And that's our end of the year Christmas party. It's um it's gonna be from like one PM to like six PM. Six in the morning. No, no. Does it say six in the morning? No. no. That was the Salsa Kings one. This is one PM to about six PM and it's BYOB and bring your own uh, bring something like it's gonna be here. Don't, don't get fancy with it. If you don't have time or, or the funds to go get it, no one's going to judge you on stuff. There's going to be plenty of food and drink here. Um, but if you want to come with a bag of chips, if you want to come with some desserts that you like, some sodas that you like. He brought last time to the picnic, which was actually a huge hit. He bought some Russian soda. He brought Russian soda that everybody freaking liked. 
Um, again, don't, don't go crazy. Tom's making a homemade maize recipe. Stroganoff. The stroganoff. Um, so yeah, I look forward to hanging out with everybody next week and not having to do everything so structured. I'll have the stream on and mic some people up, unless it turns into a bad experience for people watching on the streams. I think you're going to be able to catch a lot of cool conversations. And with that, we'll wrap it up. Thank you. If you were able to get it, beauty. Yeah, I'm working with somebody to first want to get it to Bluetooth speaker. And Amazon Global created one up at Claymore. 50k in sales, but like 500 in ads. It's a Bluetooth speaker in, in the shape of a Claymore mine. Saturday, next Saturday, yeah, next Saturday. Just that, that's all we're doing. In that category is Bluetooth speakers. Yeah. Mientras, I bet you that no one will be there. Yeah, I agree. 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 Yeah, like, yeah, like, like everything. Let me turn the mic on. Let me look to see who has any questions that I can't get to. Uh, Houston Airports, my business goal for this year is to launch one successful product on Amazon. You did it, bro. All right, everybody, I'm going to cut my mic uh, now. I will create a stream link for anyone that wants to catch some cool conversations next week. But otherwise, this is the last official uh, meetup of the year. Much love to everybody. Uh, we'll keep in communication on Telegram. And I, yeah, I, I, I hope we stay in contact. If not, I'll see you in the next meetup at the beginning of the year. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, all that stuff. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, who jumped in. I don't know if you're still here. Darwin, Steve, Angela, Eva, what's up, Lexi? Um, Houston Imports, um, Mace, I don't know if you're still here. Hopefully you sent me that message. I haven't been able to look yet. Jose, everybody, thank you so much. Um, take a second to subscribe to the channel if you can. And I'm out.